episode of Kaiju Spotlight has quickly become the most successful. Yeah, it has like 2,000 views, you son of a bitch. No, it, oh. it has just over 7,000 now. Does it really? What? 7,044. Jesus Christ! I know. I picked a good time to capitalize on the new movie. <laughs> I was actually, I was actually fuck the Colonel Sanders of of videos about the Mutos. Oh. That was actually the intention too. I was like, this is when I decided that I needed to do another episode before I do the special thing. I was like, I'm gonna cash in on this shit. <laughs> and it paid off. It has the. It did. It did pay off. Congratulations, man. It has the, did you get? Did you get any new subscribers out of it? Yeah, I've had I've had a few over the past few days. I'm up to 146. So. Good. 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 It's the video of mine with the second highest number of views. What's the first? You, you remember that thing I did where I where I cut the scene from Austin Powers together with 90? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And for some, the Japanese react to Zilla. And for some reason, it never got copy or struck. Um, yeah, it's, it's – of course, it's been accumulating this over time. It has uh, over 12,000 views. Yeah, my my number one video is weird, too. My number one video is a video called Godzilla Roars Tribute, and it's literally just like 30 seconds of roars I got off of the internet with a picture over it, and that's the whole video. Genius. It's so avant-garde. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, yeah, I know, right? It was just such an artsy-fartsy fucking project. It's got like 93,000 views. Um over 7,000 comments, 40... And then happily, I think my third most viewed thing on my channel is WOCP. No. It's got like six, 65,000 views. Now, the ratio of views to likes is is a bit sad. You can blow me, Dylan. You can just fucking blow me. I'm not talking about WOCP. I'm talking about my episode. Oh! The ratio of views to likes. Normally, I would be very happy with 46 likes, but when you have over just over 7,000 views... It raises yeah. some, it raises some interesting questions. Well, you know what I think happened? People thought they were going to see clips. Yeah, that always happens. People think they're getting clips. They're not getting. And, and clips. it's just like, are you a fucking idiot? I'm oh. not going to get. I already have my copyright strikes, bitches. I already can't do unlimited <laughs> videos until September. Okay. Somebody, somebody posted the last thirty seconds of the movie on YouTube, and I've been watching that shit like a motherfucker and downloaded it because I was like, this is not going to stay on for a while. Somebody posted the whole movie. I watched it again with shitty quality, and then did you really? And then of course it got taken down. Oh, I wish you should have sent it to me. What the oh, fuck's dude, wrong? The, with you? the quality was awful. But it, it doesn't matter. It was so you could barely see it. <laughs> Was it like outside of the theater, through a doorway? I don't know. The fat guy sitting in front of the screen. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Actually, there were only like two times when people got up. I was pretty happy. It was a lot better than a lot of the bootlegs I've seen. But he. That was you had, there was this there was the status you wrote that was fucking great where you were just like, I really enjoyed Godzilla 2014 again, except when all those times people got up and sat in front of got, got up in front of the screen. Right, right. Why must people get up in the theater? <laughs> Come on, you don't do that? You sit the whole time? I do. You don't My get ass up does not move. Stretch your legs. My ass does not move, man. Especially when there's a Godzilla movie. I on sat through Return of the King, and I had to pee from the time that fucker started. <laughs> when I saw X-Men Days My of bladder Past. almost turned black and fell out. <laughs> My bladder almost said, fuck you, and went away without me. Um, oh, I, when I saw, uh... The bridge on the Captain joke was originated by Shatner himself. <laughs> Good on you. That's, that's hilarious. He, he's really, really funny. Um, yes. he, I, I, follow, I, I followed him on Twitter. I stopped because he posts way too much shit, but he was, he's really funny. Why are you climbing um, a mountain? Uh, when I saw X-Men, uh, Days of Future Past, uh, the, I had to pee for, like, the last half hour. <laughs> but I, my, my eyes were... Did you see it? No. I'm a, it's 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 really good. My eyes were like glued to the screen the whole time. Yeah, I've heard it's really good. I've also heard good things about uh, that Tom Cruise movie. Yeah, I'm I'm hopefully seeing that tomorrow. Um, I was gonna see it last week, but I I just was I was sick last week. Um, Apparently, and it's not based off anything, but it's like Brad Jones said it's like the best video game movie he ever seen because the whole thing is about dying and having to start over. That I, that's what I heard. Um, it's like ground. By the way, Dylan, we're recording. Um, we really. Yeah, so, hello everyone, I am Zazibar, and welcome to this week's episode of the Demons from Outer Space, episode 28. Joining me as always, Dylan McCandless. Hello. 
We have like five minutes of podcasting already. Do we really? When did you yeah. when did you hit the record button? I don't remember. <laughs> um, How much of this has been recorded? Uh, I think up to uh, up to when I was talking about Godzilla, the Godzilla Roars tribute thing. I don't know. They're listening. They know because that's when the video starts. Um, Who knows how many terrible things I've said in the interim? Um, no, I, I would have. I would have cut it out. So you didn't get to. Hear, so maybe I cut out all of Dylan's like horribly racist, fucking like anti-Semitic diatribes. What if? What if this episode started and the first thing they hear, and that's how I feel about the Jews. <laughs> Because <laughs> it, cause it's so it's so non nondescript that it may or may not be good or bad. Uh, yeah, I could, everybody would assume the worst, but it turns out that the the five minutes before that you actually cut out because it was so boring because it was just me talking about how they were just so such wonderful human beings. Or <laughs> gone extinct. Um, very frugal. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. Oh God. I cut out. I cut out all your like anti-American. Like you just went on a whole like fifteen-minute spout about Obama and about how America is going to collapse and about how the neo-Nazis are going to take over. Right, right, right. Sounding strangely hopeful. Um. <laughs> oh god. Uh, I think I was. Oh, I was trying to tell a story about X Men. Um, before I introduce the show. Um. Uh, so I'm sitting through X Men, and I wanted to sit through the movie. And the end credits pop up. And my friend Jake, who had seen the movie before, this was like the week after it opened, and he had already seen it. And he just goes, "We got to stay through the credits." And I'm like, "Jake, you don't understand. I'm gonna piss my pants if I don't go to the bathroom now." And he's like, "No, no, no. The credits are almost over. You've got to sit." And I was like, "Jake, I, I can't, dude. I'm gonna piss my pants." And he just goes, "Bill, you got to sit through it. Sit through it." So I'm like, "All right, all right, all right." So I'm sitting. The end credits are going. They get to the songs that were in the movie, and I'm just like, hurry up, Brian Singer, hurry up. I swear to God. And then then they end the songs, and I'm like, oh. Then they get to the last credit. I'm like, yes. And then they cut to company logos, and I'm like, you fucking piece of shit. And then they cut to the after credit scene, and I was like, I almost, my bladder almost blew up for that. Well, I told you about my experience when I saw Pacific Rim in theaters. Oh, you stayed? No, I didn't. I couldn't stay. I I did not stay until after the credits because. Oh, you didn't see the Ron Perlman. I was like, what the fuck was after the, the end credits of Pacific Rim? I didn't see the Ron Perlman thing until months later because oh, I had to pee right. during that movie worse than I have ever had to pee in my entire life. <laughs> that's how I felt during X Men. Like as I Dude. as I told you a few minutes ago, I I once sat through Return of the King, the theatrical cut, the extended cut would have killed me. Um, having to pee, <laughs> having to key, having to pee almost since the beginning of the movie. I did that. You started sweating out the pee. But but at that point, that particular instance, it wasn't as intense. With Pacific Rim, it was like I was on fire. <laughs> That's how I felt. It's like the worst pain ever. It feels like your dick's going to explode. And I'm like, can they wind up this climax for the love of God? <laughs> and that was and that was before Slattern showed up. Um, oh God. Oh God. Um. You said that during the Hong Kong scene. Um, oh God. Uh, anyway, so fucking. Um, I'm um, orgasming back there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this guy really jerking off to fucking monsters fighting giant robots. Yeah, man, people were into some fucked up shit. Um, well, he turns around. Are you are you fucking jerking off? It's like no. No, I've got to pee You're really bad. I've really got to pee. Well, go pee. My ass ain't getting up. <laughs> I gotta think about this this stuff. I never get up during the movie. Really? Never, dude. I, it's it's a thing. I just can't. I just can't get up. I don't want to miss anything. Oh God. So the scene ends, and I'm just. I turn to Jake, and I'm like, "That's it, apocalypse." And he's just like, "Yeah, aren't you happy that you stayed?" Eh. Um. I'm probably not gonna see this new movie. Um. Even though I could, because they've retconned... Well, I guess this is a spoiler, but they've retconned all previous X-Men movies now. Yeah, I already knew about that. The only X-Men movie that's in continuity now is uh, is Days, is uh, X-Men First Class. I've read all the spoilers. They kind of had to, because Days of... F- uh, I mean, not Days of Future Past. Uh, First Class was really the point when I was like, they obviously don't give a fuck about continuity anymore. 
Yeah. Um, which I was fine with because First Class is an amazing movie. Um, All the other X Men movies are just kind of eh, except for X Men Two. X Men Two is awesome. X Two and First Class are the two best. I'm also I'm also pretty fond of of the Wolverine. Oh, that's retcon now too. I forgot. The Wolverine is retcon. Yeah. Well, part of it, not the part that takes place in the forties. Um, oh, good. The flashback is still in continuity. Thank you, Jesus. The only problem they have is they keep cutting back to Wolverine in like the past, and I don't mind. Hugh Jackman looks noticeably older than he did back in X. And it's a bigger problem because in Days of Future Past they cut to like they have a it's they gonna... they cut they cut to a scene from the first X Men movie, and he looks really young, and then they cut back to like. When it's supposed to be Wolverine in the 70s and he looks like an old man, I'm just like, what the fuck? Watching the first couple X-Men movies is, is now going to be like watching pre-Matt Smith Doctor Who. It's like half of this shit never happened anymore. Yep, 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 yep. This yep. shit has been retconned the fuck out. Well, it's like whenever the Doctor is like, oh, when I blew up my own planet. Yeah, about that, Doctor. Um, <sighs> I, don't, I don't know. Blow it up as much as put it in another dimension. Um, and even if he had been correct, he never really blew it up as much as burned it. Yeah, no, he. It's it's weird. Like we like they always say burns, and I'm like, oh, that's like a metaphor. No, he literally burned it. Um, yeah, he he burned it. I'm assuming it blew up after that. Um, who, who knows? Or maybe it just um, kept well, burning. More... Or maybe it just kept burning until it it worked its way down to the core. What was that weapon called again? The moment. Right, I, I I was gonna say the nothing, but I was like, oh, that's from Never Ending Story. Um, the nothing. But it's it's the same purpose. The moment, literally, they call it the Galaxy Eater. It literally just devours entire, like, in, it devours just entire galaxies. Um, it is Galactus. It is Galactus, and I I guess the idea was more so, the Doctor literally wiped the Time Lords out of existence because he unleashed Galactus. <laughs> I want somebody to intercut that now. Whether or not they have to use Rise of the Silver Surfer as a sacrifice I'm willing to make, just have Galactus attack Gallifrey. I, you know what? I have no guilt over this nonsensical uh, idea. If if Marvel can turn Galactus into a cloud, then I can turn him into Billy Piper. <laughs> Galactus is now free reign just because of the fact that they fucked him up so bad in Rise of the Silver Surfer. Galactus can be anything you want because there's a little bit of Galactus inside all of us. <laughs> Cut to Galactus destroying Tokyo. Galactus, Godzilla, diabetes. Diabetes. Galactus with diabetes? Now that's... that's, that's <laughs> Galactus would have diabetes, though, wouldn't he? I mean, he's just, he's just always eating planets, and he's, eat, and he's eating everything on the planet. Well, it's not so, so much. So, would he have diabetes by by default? It's not so much physically eating the planet as it is absorbing the energy from it. Um. All right, fine. I well, mean, what about doesn't... fucking Rise of the Silver Surfer Galactus? He actually eats them. Well, he's a cloud. Clouds don't get diabetes. <laughs> yeah, but apparently they can make packs with Silver Surfers. Um... He's a living cloud. So then, why can't he get diabetes? Because he doesn't have blood. Therefore, he doesn't have. <laughs> therefore, he doesn't have blood sugar. <laughs> Fine, Dylan. Way to be a fucking dream killer, man. I'm sorry I ruined your dream of diabetic Galactus. <laughs> <laughs> what if he has, like, the equivalent, though, like, the equivalent of diabetes for Galactus? Just picture fucking Wilford Brimley in the Galactus costume. <laughs> <laughs> Reed Richards is like, Galactus, why are you doing this? Diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> I was losing my ice cream. I was losing my apple pie. Because <laughs> I have diabetes. Um, <laughs> why you do this, Galactus? <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> Jose Garcia, get on that shit. Um, yeah. Now that Bill's actually posted the the uh, the video and you've you've heard our idea, do it, man. You do it, motherfucker. Do it, Galactus with diabetes. <laughs> Keep calm and diabetes. <laughs> Reed Richards is just like fucking. Oh sh oh no, Galactus is destroying the planet. Yes, <laughs> I am. Yes. <laughs> Jose Garcia is gonna make this funnier than I'm making it sound. I just wanted to end with why you do this, Galactus. Diabetes. Diabetes. <laughs> oh.
Uh, you know how you do it? The, the entire th- the entire time you have him looking normal, and then after after Reed Richards says why you do this, Galactus, he looks straight at the camera. All of a sudden, he's morphed into Wolford Brimley. <laughs> he just goes, "Stop!" Nah, nah, he's... <laughs> What'd you just send me now? Look at this fucking link. <laughs> Let's see. I don't know if he's a cake, but what I do. Diabetes. <laughs> That's fucking great. One of my favorite ones I've seen is is this is this Forrest Gump one where it's like, life oh, I've seen that one. Life, life is, is like a box of chocolates. It sucks if you have diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I gave oh. I gave that bitch diabetes. Bitches love diabetes. I know mine was. She asked for the D, so I gave her diabetes. That was my favorite one so far. Um, oh God, what were we talking about before we went off on the diabetes tangent? Oh. God, this one, this one's hard, hardly related. There's a picture of Doctor Phil. He <laughs> says, "You're fat. Don't sugarcoat it, because you'll eat that too." Yeah, I saw that one too. Did you just Google Wilford Brimley diabetes? No, oh, I just Googled diabetes. <laughs> Yeah, because I saw that too when I was editing SOS. I was just, I was just, I just googled that to look at with the with with the podcast, and I found that one. And I was like, "What the fuck? Did he actually say this? Because if so, he's an asshole." Um, he says lots of crazy shit on that show. I've never watched that show. Jesus Christ! Every now and then, he just delivers the verbal smackdown. Is it like in a good way or a bad way where you're just like, oh, this guy's an asshole, or oh, no, he's got a point. No, because usually the, the people he's doing it to are such awful human beings Oh, that you're like, yeah, fuck their shit. So it's like House, where it's just like, like what he's saying is horrible, but he's saying it to an idiot, so you're just like, yeah, it's okay. Um, I used to watch Dr. Phil for that very, that very reason. It, it was kind of like watching NASCAR waiting for a car crash. Which is hilarious, because my brother watches NASCAR for the sport. Um, oh. And I'm just like, all right, tell me when somebody dies. Um, there's also there's also a picture of Wilford Brimley where it looks like the Joker. And it says, why so diabetes? <laughs> oh, God. That's funny. Oh. Maybe, we should, maybe we should keep from turning this into another episode of Diabetes. Diabe- I don't want diabetes to become like the one thing we're known for. Like it used to be God, like it used to be Godzilla 2014 discussions, and now it's diabetes. <laughs> we might as well just rename the podcast diabetes, or just do a new one just called diabetes, where it's just us just fucking saying that over and over again for two hours. Oh shit, Bill! What? Somebody already? No, we're not doing that, Dylan. I was kidding. Wait, no, somebody already did it. What? Look at this picture. No. 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 Oh, no. God, please, no. No. God, no. No. I mean, they didn't use the Wilford Brimley picture. <laughs> no, yeah, that's the only, no, no, no. Ours was Stay Calm and Diabetes. <laughs> so it's different. You see, Dylan? Um, was it really, Bill? Was it really? No, but we can change it now. Um, like, the one addition we have is Wilford Brimley's little fucking black and white face at the top. Damn it, I'm so mad now. Um, I wanted that shirt, but I wanted it to be because of us and Jose Garcia. Um, I didn't want somebody else to have already come out with it. God damn it. Damn everyone else taking advantage of all the jokes that can be had from Wilford Brimley and his type 2 adult onset diabetes. <laughs> And his inability to pee at night. <laughs> and how, he was, how dare you take that from us? How he was losing his ice cream. He was losing his apple pie. <laughs> Fuck you people. How dare you take that shit away from us? That was our birthright. You're like the people who took turning into a Super Saiyan away from Vegeta. You're like the Goku of us. He turned into a Super Saiyan before Vegeta. It's just like that, except with diabetes. You people. You people. (laughs) What was I about to say? (laughs) You fucks. 
you're the same people who have already used up all of the it's over 9,000 jokes, aren't you? Yeah. You make that passe, so now we make those jokes, we're getting fucking judged for it and shit. You're the reason Team 4 started and have Android 16 sound like the Terminator. It had been done too much. Yes, it's fucking stupid. Fuck you. I hate you. Whoever you, whoever you are, I hate you. Speaking of which, there were two amazing things from Team 4 Star recently. Did you see the uh, the Return of Cooler movie? Not yet. I've been planning to. It's fucking genius. Is it really? Yeah. They also did Attack on Titan abridged. And it was just, oh, they do that? Yeah, they did. They already released the first episode. And unlike DBZ Abridged, where it only goes over one episode, Attack on Titan Abridged pretty much covers most of the first half of the season. <laughs> <laughs> it's a 20-minute long video that just, like, covers, like, the first half of the season. Like, hey, this shit's happening. Which one do you think is funnier? Out of the two? Yeah. Ah. Uh, Come on, you can't top DBZ. That's a classic. Well, the problem is the Attack on Titan video is so much longer, therefore there's a wider volume of jokes, therefore it technically gets more laughs. That's bullshit, Dylan. <laughs> but... Which, okay, so I'm just like, all right, they're, I put you in a room. They're kind of tied right now because, all right, no, no, because no, no. on the other room. end of the spectrum, you have DBZ Abridge, which has been around longer and has had all this like character development and shit that they that character development, yeah, it has actually too. that they use to their advantage, and they they always play with that so well. So you have a wider variety of jokes, like for on the on the uh, on the Attack on Titan video, like for instance when one of the characters yells, "Holy Pacific Rim job." And then you have... Oh, and at one point in the episode, they even used the Pacific Rim music. It was genius. Oh, that's awesome. How many Godzilla jokes did they make? Um, I don't remember any, actually. What? Well, I mean, it's it's not a giant lizard. I know, but it's giant monsters. Like, anything connected to giant monsters tends to make a Godzilla joke. Um. Like, even fucking, like, DBZ Abridged when fucking... Perunga shows up in the middle of West City and they're just like, should we really do that here? Oh no, it's Godzilla! But at the same time, the laughs in the DBC Return of Cooler movie were, like, better. Yeah. Was it really funny? Oh, I want to see it so bad. Oh, you need to. You need to go to YouTube after this or whenever you get the chance and watch it. And and you should... you should No, wait, you shouldn't watch the Attack on Titan one because you haven't watched... You haven't finished season one. Or even the first half of season one. No, still on episode three. <laughs> Adam actually linked that on the SOS group page. Um, abridged? Yeah, uh, Attack on Titan abridged episode one. Because mm. it's cool. Because it's not being posted by Team Four Star. Apparently, it's being posted by somebody else, but they work on it. Like I guess it's like a co like production or something. Oh, it's like Helsing abridged because they, they 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 work on that too, but they don't post it. But they have like all these like guest like people on there. Like Nostalgia Critic is fucking in it. There's a point where they have um a narrator and it's Doug Walker. <laughs> That's fucking awesome. It is. It is. But but the but yeah, I probably enjoyed the Return of Cooler one more just because I'm more attached to that series. Well, it's just like I've got like I have a separate nostalgia from like we're not nostalgia, but like just positive memories of like classic DBZ of being a kid, but it's moments of just laughing at DBZ at Bridge as an adult. I'm gonna I'm gonna spoil one of the DBZ one of the jokes from that episode for you because I gotta talk okay. because I gotta talk about it. I don't even know if you remember this, but it always stuck out to me in the actual movie, the actual DBZ movie Return of Cooler. There's this moment where Cooler fucking kicks Vegeta in the dick. <laughs> yeah, I remember this. And Vegeta, the look on his face. But anyway, they capitalized on this perfectly because at one of the points, they, they show that, and then at one of the points in the middle of the fight when him and Goku are like sitting there like panting, he's like, he keeps kicking me in the dick. Why does he, why, why does he keep kicking me in the dick? <laughs> And later on, you know, later on when um, the army of Metacoolers are sliding down the hill when Goku and Vegeta go Super Saiyan? Yeah. They cut directly from that to them hanging in inside the Bigetti Star with the with the wires uh, hooked up to them. And the first thing Goku says is, I can't believe they all kicked you in the dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's so fucking funny. And the last thing, the last thing Vegeta says right before they finish off Cooler is, this is for my dick. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. 
Oh god. They also That's great. they also keep making fun of of the name Big uh, Big Getty Star. That they make the obvious joke at one point of calling it the Big Ghetto Star, but I think my favorite <laughs> point in the episode, or no, not my favorite point in the episode. My favorite point is probably the dick joke, but one of my favorite points in the episode is when Goku goes, "So you were brought back by the Spaghetti Star," <laughs> which is kind of fitting because when when Coor comes back at the end of the movie, he looks like he's made of spaghetti. Pretty much. That's that's hysterical. Yeah, I haven't watched I haven't watched um the last couple episodes either of Abridged yet. I'm I'm planning on it though. Oh, it's um, so good. It is really good. I just I just I just have it. Um I should I am I'm, I'm I'm gonna do it though. It's gonna happen. I'm just gonna knock it out. Fuck it. He's gonna do it. <laughs> well, I'm almost tempted to like wait until it's over, so that way I can just, like, enjoy it all in one sitting. Mm-hmm. Like, that's how I watched season two, and I, I just thought it was genius. I, I can't do that, man. I have to, I have to, when when I see a new video, I gotta watch the fuck out of it right then. <laughs> to the point where I have a fucking playlist on my channel, where I've just amassed all the DBC abridged, to, so that I can access it in a convenient fashion. No, I just, I just, whenever I want to watch, stuff, like, season two, I'll just, like, watch the movies people have posted that aren't Team Force. Like, people have, like, assembled all the seasons into movies. And then I have a separate p- playlist for all the specials. <laughs> so all the movies they've done, and all the, like, like that one time when they did uh, DBZ Kai abridged. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was hysterical. And it's like the whole show in, like, two minutes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember that was fucking hysterical. Um, oh, God. No, my favorite joke they did about Kai was when they were like, hello, I am Blue Popo. <laughs> <laughs> and Popo was like, what the fuck is this? Oh, hello, my racist counterpart. No, no, no. Prepare to be assimilated. Oh, and, he, and, he, and he just, like, absorbs him. Oh, my God, you know what I did? What'd you do? Apparently, apparently Saturday's conversation on SOS has warped my perception of reality. Because, because I... <laughs> what, what, you just started going, diabetes. No, because I go into Google with the intention of searching for Wilford Brimley. <laughs> I, get all, I get all these weird ass picture picture results, and I'm like, "What the fuck is this?" I look up at the at the little search bar and realize that I didn't type in Wilford Brimley. I typed in Wilford Billy. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck kind of pictures did you find? What the fuck? Apparently, there are people with this name because it's just a bunch of people pictures of people. Some of them are white. Some of them are black. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, that is so fucking funny. Oh, that's funny. That is great. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> that's fucking funny, dude. Um. Oh, gee, dear God. No, now whenever the like the first thing I like if I if I type in Wilford Brimley on Google, the first thing that pops up is Wilford Brimley diabetes. Somebody made a, a Wilford Brimley Yu-Gi-Oh card. I saw that, and it was like warrior class, like and and it's a special ability diabetes. He's got a shit attack, but his defense is amazing. <laughs> They should have given him given him an effect. Where it was like your enemy's monsters will get diabetes. <laughs> oh, your enemy's monsters are drained of all insulin. <laughs> Lose two hundred life points. Did you ever play Yu Gi Oh as a kid? I did. Did you really? I did. What uh, around what year? What year? Yeah. Like, I know it got really popular in, like, 2004, 2005. Yeah, probably around then. I think I was in... I remember I got into Yu-Gi-Oh! around the same time I got into Dragon Ball Z. I'm pretty sure... Well, yeah, it was way later for me, but of course I was into Dragon Ball Z from, like, the fucking cradle. (laughs) Out of the womb! It's like like Godzilla. I can't tell you when it started, because some of my earliest memories involve it. Um, But, um... And I can tell you both. Um, but, but, but yeah, probably about 2004, 2005, because if I remember correctly, I was in like late elementary to early middle school, like that that in between stage right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I was in. Yeah, I guess I no, I was in like really. You were late elementary. Early, when does middle school start down there? Because I know it's different depending on the state. Oh, when does yours start? Seventh grade. 
Really? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not. When does it start around here? <laughs> 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 oh no. <laughs> Dude, I didn't ask you, like, the meaning of life. I was like, when did your middle school start? I don't fucking know. Actually, you know what? Skip the early middle school part. I'm pretty sure it was l- just late elementary because, let's see, it's really yeah, it's really easy like- It's really easy for me to remember what grade I was in for all this shit because it was always like, I got out of fourth grade in 2004. Like, it always fell that way. Yeah, I, uh, two th- I was in third or fourth grade when I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, yeah. That sound right? Yeah, yeah. That's not that's not middle school, dude. Um, when uh, you said that, I was like, I, you're only a year older than not even a year. You're a couple months older than me. How the fuck does that work? I don't remember my childhood anyway. Um, more than that, I remember there being a, a, like a like a f- brief moment where there was like this retro, well not retro, but like this nostalgic like week where everybody just brought in their Yu Gi Oh cards in in high school, mm. where we just started fucking dueling each other. We're like fucking 16. I remember, it was so fucking funny. I remember I was... I was pretty... Though I say that now, and I go to college, and people are still playing Yu-Gi-Oh! At, and they're older than me, like 20. Or, or not, that's not that much older than me, like 20, 22. I think I... And I walk through the, through, the caf, through, the, through the cafeteria, and they're fucking playing Yu-Gi-Oh! And I'm just like... So above you guys. I'm going to go watch Godzilla. Um, the story of me losing interest in Yu-Gi-Oh! was actually pretty similar to the story of me losing interest with Pokemon. I remember I lost interest around the time that like they started releasing all these new like dumbass cards. I remember I lost interest in Yu-Gi-Oh! when, I, when they started doing Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, and I was like, yeah. I'm yeah, done. yeah, it was around that point. They started releasing all these like new dumbass monsters, and I was like, I'm... I remember the, the moment in, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! show where I stopped watching. Uh, it was after Battle City. Yeah. He, it was when they were in, like... It, no, no, no. It was, it was when they were, like... There was this weird time where, like, the Pharaoh and you... Did, did you watch the cartoon, too? Some of it, yeah. Are you talking about the, the, the final seasons where um, Yugi and them go back to Egypt? No, not that. It was, like... I, and I, it's, never, it's, I never watched any of that. that. I never watched any of that. I just remember reading some of that in, in, when I used to buy Shonen Jump. Um... Holy shit, that, the, the Yu-Gi-Oh! manga is fucked up, though. It is pretty fucked up. Or was, it was more fucked up earlier on, because they, they didn't have dual monsters then. It was just, it was literally... Because Yu-Gi-Oh! just means Game Master. Yeah. And you, the Pharaoh would literally just show up. and be, Like, if you watch Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero, or there, Bridge, there's, it's pretty much there's like... There's an episode, if I'm not mistaken, where they play fucking Russian roulette. Yep, yep, there is. <laughs> This is some intense shit. I like. Yeah, and it was just like, and, and and of course when they when they brought it to the fucking states, they were like, no, 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 we're starting off when it got real PC, so put it on like where where we started to get the to duelist kingdom and duel monsters. Not when the when not when the pharaoh would show up and like chop somebody's hand off. Oh, I remember that too. Yeah, yeah, I, I read the early manga stuff. I like that shit better than what we got later. <laughs> of course, it's way better. It's way cooler. <laughs> like. At least it is now. Like when I was no, I was even as a kid. I when I remember reading about that because I, I I too would buy Shonen Jump, or Shonen Jump, and I and I would read like I, they they didn't have the full stories, but I remember reading articles about it, and I was like, this sounds awesome. Um, or buy. I remember going to I because I, I I read a I read DBZ in manga. I never read the Yu Gi Oh mangas in in full, mm, but I, I remember either. buying. I remember. I read, like, the first couple volumes, actually. The shit we were just talking about. That crazy-ass motherfucking shit. Um, <laughs> where the pharaohs chopping people's hands off. I would have rather Yu-Gi-Oh! stayed that and then to have done uh, dual monsters, like, in a different way. I always, when I was a kid, used to picture how amazing it would be if you had, an I, like, an anime that was based in the dual monsters universe. So, like, pick a monster, probably, like, Dark Magician, and have him be your main character. Like, set it up like... Um, like, instead of it being, like, a game, have it be, like, a scenario. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Like, I don't know. Does he mean Dark Magician is, like, a superhero? Not like a superhero, because it wouldn't be in, like... <laughs> <laughs> Dark Magician Man! dun dun, dun. On the st- On the rooftops of Domino... C- I think that was what the city was called. Domino City. <laughs> No, but see. Dark magician man. No, but see. Stands in wait for evil to strike. No, what I'm saying is. <laughs> no, 
uh, well, what I pictured is like doing it as like a fantasy series. <laughs> With like those, I still, I still don't understand what you mean. Like instead, of, they wouldn't be characters in a game; they would just be characters. Does that make any sense? So what would they be doing? I don't know. <laughs> oh, so combating. All right. Combating. See, I was confused. I thought what we were doing was like doing a dark, dark magician, the TV show, where he's like a real guy putting on a costume, going out there blasting people with the dark magic attack. No, what I'm saying. So you mean like okay? So you like like, set it in its own universe, kind of like I don't know, like so like fucking the Celtic Guardian. That's that's a character. That's a dude. Yeah, it's not like it's not a fucking card. It's it's a person, man. (laughs) But what would they be doing then? They'd just be fighting. They'd be fighting like the blue eyes white dragon, right? They would be combating evil. So, like, the super friends of Yu-Gi-Oh! monsters is Dark Magician, uh, Celtic fucking Guardian. Uh, Celtic Guardian, the Dark Magician girl, that, that's Dark Magician's Robin, so she's voiced by Casey Kasem. Uh, I always, um, always imagine she would come in later as his apprentice. Uh. Just like Robin. So, who's Superman? Because Celtic Guardian is like Aquaman. Um, who's Superman in this scenario? Wouldn't Dark Magician kind of be the Superman in this scenario? No, uh, Dark Magician's Batman. Okay, who who's the Dark Magician is totally Batman. Who who is who is the Superman? That's a good question. Who is the Superman of, of the Yu-Gi-Oh monster Super Friends? Well, we got to pick from Yu-Gi's Yu-Gi's deck because Kaiba is like the villain. From the entire time that I was a child, though, I, I decided that the villain, the main villain, the arch nemesis, would be Summon Skull. No, so, Summon Skull would be on Yu-Gi's side. But 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 he's a. Th- but he was because he was Yu-Gi's monster. But he's a fiend. <laughs> <laughs> so? And he's Are you racist or some shit? Fiends can't be good people? Look at his design, man. He's like classic, like Skeletor on steroids gonna fuck your shit <laughs> up. Oh, so the Summon Skull can't be a good guy. That's so mean, Dylan. No, what would his family no. say? His family wants it listens to this show. He can't They want to see him be good. His family can suck my dick. <laughs> No, they can't because they're they're terrible looking creatures. Oh, just like spiders, they're terrible human beings. I would like to avoid them sucking my dick, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, don't do that. I want you to just stay away from me. There, his family can hire an attractive hooker to suck my dick, <laughs> thus making them lose money, which means I win. Dylan wins. Dylan got it sucked for free. <laughs> As opposed to every other night when it gets sucked for twenty bucks a pop. Um, oh God. Twenty. <laughs> fucking inflation, Bill. What are you fucking crazy? I'm a repeat customer. I get a discount rate. Um. <laughs> you too. Um. I don't do business like that shit. <laughs> oh God. Um. What were we saying? Oh, you summon Skull. Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> no, no, actually, he would be like a recurring villain. The the main villain, the main nemesis would be, what's that thing called where it's... it's, it's <laughs> what's that thing called? Huh? Where it's, it's, Let me just flip through the catalog of Yu-Gi-Oh monsters. Where it's... <laughs> I used to have one of those. Um, where it's, I have one of those too. Where it was like Dark Magician, but like evil. What's it called? Dark Magician? Um, no, his skin was blue and he had, like, crazy hair. That was Dark Magician. What? That was, the mo- that was a newer version of Dark Magician. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. No, it wasn't. Absolutely was. He had a different name. Clearly we're, <laughs> clearly we're thinking of two different people. No, they, they did a re... I, I know what you're talking about. They did a reissue of Dark... At least I think so. I might not remember no, this because, correctly. I Because I, I, I used to think he was a different character. No, 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 because I specifically remember this being a different character. I'm not talking about the... I'm not talking about the reissue. That happened later. Because this card... Because Dark Magician, you always summon just by doing some tributes, you know, the old-fashioned way. This was like... A, yeah, sacrifice. You had to do, like, a rich... You had to use a ritual spell to summon this guy. Like, he was this... Oh! But it was like... But wasn't it like, a, you know, Pokemon is evolution. Yu-Gi-Oh! had something else, too. No, or it was like no, no. If, you, if you if you if you summon Dark Magician, and you and you activate this magic card, okay. or like his name is the Sorcerer of Black Chaos. That is an am- send me send me a picture. I I do remember this actually. This, Just send me a picture and I'll remember. That is an amazing name, the Sorcerer of Black Chaos. Like it's like 
the Dark Magician, except it's a different name. <laughs> he's like this. His, his hat isn't like the the pointy. His hat. his hat isn't pointy like the Dark Magician one. He's got like this like horn thing going on, or like this court jester type deal. And he has it's taking forever to load. And he's got this crazy. Oh, 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 yeah. Pegasus had this card in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. That guy. Oh, this guy was a um, black the black luster knight. He was an evolution of him. And the black luster dragon. Yeah, I remember this. This guy. This guy. Yeah, that guy. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. Yeah, the guy with the face and the horns. Yeah, I remember him. Um, yeah. Do you remember the um, like the evolution of the Dark Magician? Like it w- he would start off purple and then he would go old and then he would turn like red. Yeah, yeah. They used to do all these like different reissues. There's so many different versions of him out there. Because because it was him and it was Blue Eyes. Those were the two most famous. Yeah, and they did a reissue of Blue Eyes too, which all the Blue Eyes I had were actually the reissued ones. I could... yeah, mine as well. I, I had one co- I had one copy of the original, which I stole from somebody. I shit you not. I could never find that original. I could never find one of those originals. I had three copies of of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, and they were all the reissue. Well, technically, I had two copies of the Blue Eyes White Dragon, and one of them was was in Spanish. So technically, that was the. Um, that was the the Andres reissue of the Blue Eyes White Dragon. I used to be able to say it in Spanish because I, I memorized that card. What was it? Uh, Azul. Oh, the the end of it is. Ojas. The end of it is Ojas Azules, and I'm trying to remember the, the first part of it. Dragono de. <laughs> Dragono. Uh, what's dragon in Spanish? Dragoon. Uh, I don't know. What is what is? Dragon. <laughs> I'm just I'm just gonna Google Blue Eyes White Dragon in Spanish. <laughs> It's not going to come up well. It's going to be like, get your dick sucked in Spanish. Yeah, because I had three of them, because I also had the fusion. Yeah, Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Oh, they did another reissue later. And then I had the blue... I I went to... um. I remember I saw the Yu-Gi-Oh! movie in theaters. And if you saw the movie in theaters, you got a... You got Blue Eyes Shining... You got a copy of Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. I didn't see the movie in theaters, but I acquired a copy. And uh, you got the Pyramid of Light trap card, which did not do what it did in the movie. Um, no, all it does is help you summon the, the, the three sphinxes, right? Yep. In the uh, in the movie, all it literally does is destroys all god cards on the field. Yeah, yeah. Because, That's all it was. <laughs> because everybody uses, uses god cards. The, part, the pr- problem is if you got your hands on a god card, you couldn't ever use them. Because they didn't have any like rules or anything on them, like they were banned from tournaments and shit. And then years later, actually a few years ago, and I have two of these because that's when I was still buying the Shonen Jumps, and they actually gave out free Yu-Gi-Oh cards and Shonen Jump every now and then. So I actually have two of the. They reissued the God cards. I have two of them. I have um, Obelisk and Raw, and they actually put like rules on the cards. You can actually play them in like the game because they actually. Like, Why couldn't you play? I I had a uh, I had Obelisk and I had a. Uh... I had the uh, I had Slifer. They they were banned from tournaments for some dumbass reason because I don't remember. It was weird. Did you play in the tournaments? I never played in any tournaments, but I I never did either because I was like fuck that shit. <laughs> I want to I want to be embarrassed in a fucking tournament. <laughs> fucking. Because I was really bad at it. I was so bad at playing Yu Gi Oh. I, I rarely won. I wasn't bad, but I wasn't tournament good. <laughs> <laughs> I was horrible. I was so bad. Um, Look at this fucking reissue that they did later, after, obviously after I finished enjoying the game. That is, they still put them out. They still do like, oh shit, that's badass. That is fucking badass. I always just got the, the fucking neck leaned over to the side shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, well, this, the, the first one's badass, too. The original Blue Eyes is awesome. Because I built... I built because my in- I had several decks, but <laughs> my favorite one was entirely comprised of dragons because I've always had a thing for dragons. I had a dragon deck. I had a. I had, well, my decks were based on what they had on the show because I lo- I loved the show and I just I just played the game because they played it on the show. Um, I used to always I used to always be like, this is so much more badass than Pokemon because look at the fucking monsters. Yeah, I know. Pokemon's like, oh, look at Squirtle. Fucking blue eyes, white dragon, bitch. Fuck your shit up. Fuck you, Pokemon. Blow me. Um. Uh, 
I remember I I there was I remember the moment I lost interest in Pokemon was when I gained interest in Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh to me seemed like the badass Pokemon. Right, I had already had that famous experience that I've talked about where it was like they're releasing more monsters. I just collected them all. Fuck this shit. <laughs> it wasn't long after that that it was like Yu-Gi-Oh happened and I was like, "Look at those monsters." Yeah, fuck fuck the fucking other thing. Um fuck the police. Yeah, fuck the police. Coming straight out of Compton. Um, <laughs> Wait, 1996. 96. Is that when the character? That must have been when the character was copyrighted. What are you talking about? The car. The the image you just sent me says copyright 1996, and I'm like, well, it all comes out earlier in Japan. It's like fucking. Yeah, but the cards in English. Like fucking. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, I guess the design was copyrighted in Japan in 96, maybe. When did the mangas come out? I have no idea. I'm gonna find out. Oh, uh, Yugi. Oh, no, no, apparently, that's not Yugi. apparently, the way to pronounce dragon is dragon. Dragon. <laughs> you just have a, a pronounce a little mark over the O. So uh, the way to say it is dragon blanco de ojos azules. And that was terrible pronunciation. I apologize to all Latinos. Yeah, that's, pretty uh, that's pretty horrible. Uh, Except Andres because he can't do any better. No. Uh, um, he talks wider than I do. Um, yep, there's the show I watched. Uh, it was 2001 to 2012. Wow, it had almost the same runtime as House. Um, <laughs> in terms of how long it, how long it lasted. I mean, yeah, the problem was it started to get a bit goofy. I think it was goofy the whole time, but just got stupid. Um, yeah, yeah. When you when you take a character from your show called Kaiba and turn him into an actual monster called Kaiba Man. Oh God! And this character called Kaiba Man looks like Kaiba if he went Super Saiyan three. But more so than that, he is wearing a blue eyes white dragon as a helmet. <laughs> Which, which there was a video game in his hand. called Yu-Gi-Oh! Du- uh, du- Duelist Roses. And he's holding in his hand a card. A Yu-Gi-Oh! Hang on one card. Second. Let, me my, let me grab my realize, phone. Hang on. Do you realize how meta this shit got? You had cards within cards, man. Oh, this is this is some this is some nostalgia right here. It, it that was when they started doing like Yu-Gi-Oh! GX and shit. And Yugi was like, and Yugi was like a legend, and he wasn't an actual fucking like character on the show. I mean, he was a he was a real person who was like this legend. The, the only good thing that ever came out of GX, in my opinion, was a uh, a Game Boy game that I enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> the only Yu Gi Oh games I ever had was uh, Battle City Duels, and there was one before that that I really liked. That was just the game, fucking the. Uh, I only had I only had two, on, on and they were both on Game Boy. One was that one for GX, and another one was this like old ass Yu Gi Oh game from like back when it but first started. Like I don't even remember what it was called, but it had like none of the good monsters in it. <laughs> because they, yeah, mine was right from when the show came out in the U.S. Because they hadn't introduced them in in the series yet, so so the oh. game had all like the shitty monsters. <laughs> You're playing this whole duel with the likes of Man Eater Bug. <laughs> Well, I remember when fucking Yu-Gi-Oh, like, you didn't have to sacrifice monsters, because you would play by Duelist Kingdom rules, and in Duelist Kingdom, you didn't have to sacrifice monsters. Just summon that shit. You want to summon Obelisk the Tormentor? Go right ahead. Ain't, ain't no thing. You ain't got to sacrifice no three monsters. <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that. Um, Put down one of them, I forget what that card was called, but it's like three swords, and your your enemy can't attack you for three turns. That was always Ace in the hole. I'm gonna put this down because that's gonna give me some time to summon this big shit. Yep. 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 Ah. Uh, hang on, I'm looking up Kaiba Man. <laughs> Don't look up Kaiba Man. <laughs> Don't give him any credit for. Oh my God! Why would you do this? Why you do this, Konami? Why you do this? I don't remember the name of the guy who invented Yu-Gi-Oh. Kazuki Takahashi. Yeah, that guy. Why Takahashi? 
Why, why you do this, Kazuki Takahashi? Why you gotta be like that? Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> well, I remember when they did uh, the uh, the duelist uh, the duelist of the roses um, uh, game. You- they had Yugi. Uh, they had like all the Yu-Gi-Oh characters, and uh, it was like it was an open world, and you would just walk around trying to find people to duel. Which makes sense. Um, right, right. You remember the other version of the game where it had like dice? Yes, yes, I do remember this. It was, it was. Uh, oh yeah, do you remember that? Um, th- there was an episode in the show about it. Uh, yeah, they they played this version of the game that were like, it was entirely played with dice. And, like, yeah, what was it called? I think dice was in the name, so it's shocking. Shocking, I can't remember. Yeah, it's, um, it's a dice thing, and like Kaiba's younger brother was like. The king had it. He was like he was the Kaiba of that game. Um, no, he wasn't. In the show? No, that was a different character. I think his name was uh the fuck was his name. Oh, I'm thinking of the early volumes of the manga. They actually introduced that dice shit like early on in the manga and Kaiba's younger brother is like this psychotic asshole. Hey Dylan, you wanna know what it's called? What? Dice Masters. Yes. Of course. I think that's what it was called. Of course. Oh, no, Dice Monsters, excuse me. How could you make such a mistake? Never mind, I fucked it up again. Uh, It's Dungeon Dice Monsters, making it longer, more complicated, and and really less interesting. Um, Bastard. It is a mess. Like, it's... It looks like a mess. Like it just looks like so overly complicated. You have to buy little figurines of the of the monsters. Yep. It's, 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 and I just found the game that like, like, I had this game, and I I returned it because I couldn't figure it out. This this is why it always works so much better in the show because they have fucking like holograms of the monsters and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was always so disappointing because because playing the game in real life is significantly less exciting. It's a lot. You have to, like, imagine it and shit, and you have to, like, you make all the really over-the-top gestures, and you would try to pretend like you were the characters in the show. You'd be like, I summon the summon skull, and then nothing would happen. Um, In your mind, you're this badass with fucking, like, Egyptian gods working for you and shit. To everybody else on the outside. Wearing, like, leather jacket with crazy hair. To to everybody on the outside, you look like you're playing fucking Magic the Gathering. (laughs) Ha 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 ha! Fucking dungeons and dragons and shit. In your mind, your fucking monsters are fighting and shit. Oh, God. It's also a really hard game. Have you ever had the the displeasure of trying to explain the game to somebody who wasn't a fan of the show? I tried to play it with my dad when I was a kid. It's really hard to explain. He didn't understand it. He just totally did not grasp the concept. He was like, so it's like poker, right? No, it's not like poker. Poker. It is literally (laughs) nothing like poker. He was a 45-year-old man. He didn't know any better. Why does Anubis look like this in the movie? Why you look like this, Anubis? Why is Anubis blonde? I I, I don't know, dude. He he looked weird. The movie's horrible, by the way. the hair of blonde Fabio. Well, there's only one shot in the movie where he has the Anubis head, and then he, he turns into a giant monster at the end. Yeah, I liked that part. <laughs> and then they actually summon real monsters. Yes. Aha, uh-huh, real monsters. Yep. And they're just like, uh, it's like, it, this isn't like Scooby-Doo. Um, and Yugi is just like, I gotta summon the blue eye shining dragon. I'm like, no, you dumb fuck. Summon fucking out, slide first. Let's find out who it was. They pull off Anubis's head. Old man Jenkins. <laughs> what were you doing? I was trying to destroy the world. Old man Jenkins. <laughs> you rascally. And I would have gotten away with it too if, you, if it weren't for your children's card game. That's our Jenkins. <laughs> Take him away, Sheriff o- O'Hare. Okay, kids. You know what else? You know what else? Um, GX did that was really fucking stupid. What? Later on in the show, they came up with these like it was like their version of the Egyptian gods. Basically, it was like to make an analogy, it was like what it was like. Oh yes, these they, these they monsters. 
these the monsters cults up with the Egyptian gods, but they didn't use the Egyptian gods. It was it was these monsters were to GX what the Egyptian god cards were to the original. I wish I could remember yeah. what they were called, but yeah, they were these yeah, yeah. they were three they were these three ugly like I don't know, these three ugly ass monsters <laughs> that were supposed to be like the new god cards. Yeah, yeah, I remember this. And I'm like, fuck your shit. <laughs> that is not Yeah, fucking... fuck you. I want the winged dragon of Ra. I don't want that ugly ass thing me mugging at me. I think I think this is them. You wonder what they're called, Dylan? What are they called? Here are their names. Urea, Lord of Searing Flames. I I always feel that way when I have too much urea. <laughs> As we said earlier when you were in the movie theater. It literally sounds like it's talking about burning urination. <laughs> I thought it was a... That's why I didn't think I found it at first. I thought it was a parody. Urea, the Lord of Searing Flames. <laughs> oh, there's also uric acid, so that makes sense. There's Hammond, Lord of Striking Thunder, just like John Hammond's. Lord of Going... No expense. Lord of Going Ham. <laughs> Hammond, Lord of bringing dinosaurs back to life. And I remember the blue one was the only one that I was like, that That looks kind of cool. It, and his name was Reveal, Lord of Fan- Lord of Phantasms, which is like the most <laughs> badass name. That sounds like a metal band, the Lord of Phantasms. So he is the master of Andrea Beaumont from, <laughs> from Batman Mask of the Phantasm. <laughs> At the end, they pull off his head, Andrea Beaumont. <laughs> I would have gotten away with it, too, if it weren't for you meddling Batman. Now we'll have to put you in jail with old man Jenkins. <laughs> oh, God. This, too, sounds like a metal band. Did you ever... Neo God Calistor. Did you ever get any of the, um... <clears throat> any of the Yu-Gi-Oh! toys? Yes, I did. I had... I had this... This, uh... This toy of Sly for the Sky Dragon... That like came with a little like Yugi. <laughs> yes. Oh, I had this. I had this. It was, it was like this Yugi that was like the size of a normal, you know, like toy, and then you had this big ass like Sly for the Sky Dragon, but he was in segments, so you had to piece him together. I had this. I had this. And I, th- I think I also had the wing, the raw one that came with a little uh, version of Merrick. Yep, and then slight. They had a uh, Kaiba with o- Obelisk. Um, yeah, I never got that one though. I ha- I didn't have that one, but I knew of it. They did reissues of the God cards too, and they look really fucking stupid. Yeah, those are the ones that I actually got later on uh, with with the Shonen Jump uh, magazine. But that's because the new ones are not based off the designs they had in the uh, the first time they appear in the show. They're they're based on their. Um, th- that's the way they originally looked in ancient Egypt. Because at the end of the show, in the last season and in the manga, they actually go back in time to ancient Egypt. Yeah, and all the monsters look different because what it is is that's what they actually looked like, and then the people put it down, you know, in the in the hieroglyphics, and then later on Pegasus found them and reinterpreted them. So all the monsters, right, right. all the monsters you've come to love and know, they 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 are knockoffs. Yeah, they're well, they're like they're like how Gareth Edwards described Godzilla in the new movie. Like the Toho Godzilla is was like a rough interpretation of what he looked like, and like the legendary Godzilla is what he actually looked like. Yeah, that, that's pretty much what's going on here. The only one that I really under... I mean, I, I don't mind the the new looks for the monsters. They actually, No, Obelus looks so much better in his original version. He does, yeah. They make Raw look more like a bird, which I appreciated. Raw looks almost the same to me. What's Slifer? I, I can't find Slifer, though. He really doesn't. Look at him side by side um, with his original form. He really does not look anywhere near the same Raw. Because in the original, he's he's a dragon. Slifer... Slifer the Sky Dragon! Slifer, no slifing. Haha! <laughs> oh, come on, everybody's made that joke. <laughs> Have they really? Holy shit, he looks nothing like fucking his original. I wasn't aware that everyone had made that joke. Everybody made that joke, yeah. Did you find it? Yeah, he looks retarded. Send it, show me it. I'm, I'm, I'm looking on my phone. Um, Damn you! Just look up Sky- Slifer the Sky Dragon, and it'll be one of the first things that pops up. Read me the URL. 
<laughs> Fuck you, Dylan. Fuck you. It's not happening. I always like that, that crazy double mouth thing he's got going on. Yeah. Did you ever um go to like a dollar store and buy fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards? Fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards. You didn't you didn't do this as a kid? What are fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards? They're fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards. What do you mean by fake though? What's fake about they were them? Knockoffs. They were like we're, they would be cut. They would be. They, yeah. I'm gonna look up. I'm gonna try and find them, and I'm, I'll send them to you. Were they the? Or not not the cards, but like an image of them. Were they the actual? Um, no, they were fucked up looking. <laughs> trying to find a fake one. Oh, found it. Okay, I'm gonna send it to you. I would because they were cheap and you could get like a god card for like two bucks. The other thing they did in the movie was they fused all three of the gods into one monster, and I was like, "Can you really do that?" No, it's bullshit. No, can't do that at all. Fuck you, movie. Fuck you, movie. Well, it's the same thing as like some of the Pyramid of Light destroys all the god cards on the field. <laughs> I remember I got so frustrated once where I, when, when I was playing, I was just like, "All right, guys, we're playing by movie by uh, the show by Duelist Kingdom rules today." So no sacrifices. This way I can summon Obelisk in the first turn. Wonderful. Also, all all fake cards are allowed. All fake cards are allowed. I, I had Obelisk. I used to have a... You know, I didn't buy it, but I think I, I acquired it in some other fashion. But I had... Because I never bought, like, a pack of these. But I did have a fake uh, Exodia... Is that his name, Exodia? Yeah, Exodia the Forbidden One. He was like the original god card. I had a fake Exodia, and the thing was, it wasn't like in five pieces like the original. It was a card of just fucking him on it. Yeah, 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 I could yeah. never figure out if it was fake or not, because the entire card was in Japanese. <laughs> well, also, uh, he wasn't called Exodia. He was called Dark Master. Dark Master. Well, there's also a... Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the one I have, but this is the English one. As opposed to to um, the Japanese one. I love how the type, dark. Dark. How dark is the dark enchanter? Real dark. You remember when they unleashed the, uh, the, the dark, the dark Exodia? Yeah, and it was Kaiba's father who had it. Yeah, that, that was pretty badass. That was pretty fucking cool. I had that card, and I had the card that you have to use to summon that card, but the problem is you also have to have all five pieces of Exodia, and I didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, this I is the most... the day that the episode came out. I was like, this is the most badass card I have, and I can't fucking use him. Yep. Where's my Duelist Kingdom rule? <laughs> <laughs> well, I remember it was just like, uh, Exodia... Well, I remember the day that that episode aired, and they were just like, who has the Dark Exodia card? This, and they did a contest where if you called in with the right character who had the Dark Exodia card, you would win, like, an Xbox. Ooh. And I, I call, and I didn't call in, but I was just like, oh, I'm going to do it. My parents were like, no, it's a, it's a, they're going to gyp, they're going to, they're going to con you. And I was like, no, let me do it. And they're just like, how much, it, it probably costs money to enter the contest. I'm like, no way. I looked it up. It costs like $25 to be put into a drawing to win an Xbox. Oh. And I remember what happened was, uh. Oh, well, excuse me. His name is not Dark Exodia. It's Exodia Necros. Oh, whoa, sorry. Um, I don't want all those hardcore Yu-Gi-Oh fans <laughs> in the <laughs> audience try to be like, Excuse me, DFOS, I was extremely upset at your misquote <laughs> of the name of Exodia Necros. That's, that's, that's the voice. I love that that's the voice. Oh, God, but I remember I go to a dollar store and buy, like, a whole thing of dark, uh... uh not dark, of, uh... <laughs> Of fake Yu-Gi-Oh cards, of dark Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, dark Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> they were like normal Yu-Gi-Oh cards. But dark. But they were dark. They were dark. <laughs> <laughs> and I would just like, I would just like play them, and my friends would be like, "You can't use those." I'm like, "Why?" Because they're like, they don't fucking count. They're fake. Because you have like three Exodias in there. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck you guys." I'm allowed to have three of the same card in my deck. Fuck all y'all. Fuck you guys. You can all go fuck yourself. I'm summoning my fake Exodia. 
Fuck you, thank you, Zodiac. Fuck you! Um, Bill, stop cursing! Fuck you, Ma! Playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I love how this episode's turned into an, a Yu-Gi-Oh rant. <laughs> yeah, and we were, this is, we had a, we had something we were gonna talk about, too. Remember when Yu-Gi-Oh was a thing? Yeah, you remember that? You remember that, Dylan? We're both sitting on the porch for like 75. You remember hey, this? Do you remember playing Yu-Gi-Oh? You, cards? You remember, out on, out on the patio? Do you remember them there Yugi man cards? <laughs> Yugi man cards! That's what my dad used to call it. I swear to God, he used to call them Yugi Man cards. I think every old person made that mistake because they were used to the Pokemon. Um, <laughs> like years later, years later, the thing, the thing that all the kids were into, including my little half brother, was Bakugan. And I'm like, are you over there playing your Baku Man? No. <laughs> oh, Bakugan Battle Brawlers. I guess. Where were those? Oh no, that was Beyblade. There was a bunch of like anime. Games out, 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 out when we were kids that were like monsters fighting each other. Appar- there was, there was. Uh... Apparently, this is to anime as like Super Sentai is is to um to, to live action Japanese television. There are so many knockoffs. Haha. <laughs> Beyblades, fucking. Well, there were Poke. Like it starts with Pokemon in terms of like having a monster and using it in a battle. And I was Pokemon, always like, Digimon. I was always like, "Hey, man, why not do something like this, but with Godzilla monsters?" And then they were like, "Kaijudo," and I'm like, "Oh God, fuck you, Yugi man, Yugi <laughs> man, digital Yugi." <laughs> oh God, Digimon. Oh God, I hate that show so much. Do you remember them Yugi Man cards? <laughs> Bye. Oh God! Bye, Gally. Bye, Gally. Do you remember I I used to take you down to the store and buy you some Yugi Man cards? I remember the Yugi Man and the Pokeo. <laughs> <laughs> the Pokeo <laughs> cards and the Digi Blades. Oh my God! I just <laughs> the Digi Blades. <laughs> I just found this fucking this fucking meme, and it's it's, okay. it's this this fucking idiot looking guy, <laughs> and the caption says, "There's no doubt about it." <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Go. <laughs> just send it. No, no, just send it to me. I can't even say it. Maybe maybe you can say it. Maybe you can. Maybe you can let. Maybe you can. Let, maybe you can light the darkness, Bill. You can light the darkness. Maybe you can let the audience in on this joke because I can't say it. <laughs> oh my God! There's no doubt about it. Goku's son is definitely the best Pokemon in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> oh God! Oh, <laughs> Goku son is the best Pokemon. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon in Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> oh, oh, that is funny. I need a moment. Oh. I need a moment. I need. Uh, I need several moments. We, we're going to take a short break and recover, everybody. <laughs> we'll be back after these messages. One of these days we should do that. We should make like a fake-ass commercial and stick it in the middle of an episode. <laughs> Advertising like fucking... No. Like Godzilla, the Godzilla vibrator. This is what we do. We'll, we, we film this in July, right? Right. Are you tired of your sex life? <laughs> do, do, do things with your girlfriend need spicing up? Then why not invest in the Godzilla flashlight? <laughs> and if you and if you're a girl Godzilla fan, we have a new addition: the Mecha Godzilla vibrator. Oh God! But put infomercial uh, music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> We're wearing like we talk like Billy Mays. Now you, can... Billy Mays here with another great product. Now you can put more pep in your step with the Godzilla flashlight. <laughs> the god of all sex toys. 
Oh, the king of the sex toys, if you will. Um, It'll have you saying, oh god, Zilla. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be the king of the bedroom, to be sure! Tokyo will be left in ruins at the extremity of your orgasms. Also, buy your girlfriend the Mechagodzilla vibrator. Because Mechagodzilla is like Godzilla, only fake, like her orgasms. <laughs> that is amazing! That is amazing. Oh, oh! No matter how good, no matter how good of a copy it is, it's still, it's still not, it's still not as good as the original. I, I got, I gotta save a copy of this meme. Oh, oh, oh! This is Dylan. My stomach hurts. I think I busted the gut. This is gonna come in handy later. <laughs> I have all these memes that I find on the internet and 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 save them, thinking this is gonna come in handy later, and they never do. <laughs> At least they haven't yet. God forbid you have a woman in the room and you need to impress her, and you're trying you're trying to sex her up, but she's just not having it. And you're just like, oh, look at this meme I have. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, baby, you want to see some of my 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 Wilford Brimley memes? She said she wanted the D, so I gave so I gave her that <laughs> Oh God. Oh, I want some Yugi Man cards now. I want to play some of the Yugi Mans in the Pokio. In the Pokio. Pokio. Did you play? Did you play it in Baymon? Did you play it in Baymon? <laughs> Kaiju. GX. Um, Kaiju. Baymon. Kai, Kaiju gone and Baku do. <laughs> Five Ds. Oh God. Well, Dylan, speaking of Godzilla and speaking of cartoons, you just, for the first time, you lost your virginity in a sense, dude. You lost your Godzilla the series virginity. That started out so much more exciting than it actually wound up being <laughs> a statement. Dylan, you lost your virginity. Holy shit, we're going to hear the story about how Dylan lost his virginity to Godzilla the series. Oh. You get fucked by a cartoon. <laughs> I'll show you. Um, <laughs> so, Dylan, you saw Godzilla the series. You sat down and watched Godzilla the series for the first time over the weekend, did you not? I did. I did. Indeed. It's... You had never seen a, even, like, a clip of it before that? I had seen clips. Mm -hmm. Never seen a full episode, though. To be specific, I had seen the clip where Zilla fights his daddy. Ah, okay. Where okay. Where he's fighting his dad and... He's more machine now than Lizard. Um, <laughs> I had seen that, and I had seen that famous shot of him sitting on top of the Empire State Building. Right, 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 right. Riding that shit like a fucking pony. <laughs> Riding like, that shit like a gay prostitute. <laughs> um. So what'd you think, sir? What'd you think? Of the series? Yeah. Sorry, I got No, of, of Godzilla riding, or not, of Zilla riding the fucking Empire State Building like a gay prostitute. Sorry, I got distracted. There's funny shit happening on Facebook. Um, <coughs> What's happening on Facebook? Oh, just, just, just my recent status. Um, anyway. I gotta see this shit now. Um, but yes, I saw the series, and I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. As a child, I, of course, avoided it for the simple fact that it was the Zilla design. And over time, right. I first, of course, heard things about how the show actually makes the design work by giving him actual Godzilla powers and making him more like the original. Um, uh, in particular, I remember watching your review back in the day. Um, right. What was I saying? <laughs> uh, you were you were saying you were discussing. Uh... Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I um, heard that the series actually made it work. I was skeptical, and I have avoided watching it up until now for that reason. But finally, I just, I just said, I just said, fuck it. You know, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do the damn thing. Just go ahead and do the damn thing. So I watched. Do the dirty deed. So I watched it all in probably two days. Just. Oh sh Yeah. Just, just shotgunned it. Um, right. 
And uh, so, yeah, and I actually, as I said, I enjoyed it a lot more than I thought I was going to. It's surprisingly well written. Yeah, for what it is, and also surprisingly makes decent use of crappy source material. Indeed, indeed. Um, the human characters. Well, they grew on me, with the exception of the red-headed chick. Elsie? Yeah, she always annoys the fuck out of me. For some Really? For some reason, she, she just gets to me. Um... All the other characters kind of grew on me over the course of the show. I kept asking why that guy is nothing like Matthew Broderick, but um, <laughs> and then you were like, "Oh, it's a good thing." Um, they didn't even. No, what I'm saying is they didn't even try to make him look like him. <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Well, I imagine that the reason was they couldn't they couldn't afford his likeness because they would have had to pay him money. All you would have had to do is draw him exactly the way he's drawn there, but with the short black hair and glasses. <laughs> Matthew Broderick cannot say that... Oh, come on, he's so much cooler on the show, though. Matthew Broderick cannot fucking say that he's the only person that looks like that. <laughs> it's pretty standard. I mean, he literally, like, you put that version of Nick Totopoulos up against fucking the character in the movie of Matthew Broderick, and you're just like, the fuck? But um, <laughs> but yeah, it was surprisingly well written. The character of Elsie got to me a lot. She really annoyed me for some reasons that I can't. Why? I don't. I thought the character. Of, I thought Audrey was way more annoying. Yeah, but she's in it so much less. It's true. She never had a chance to. I mean, she annoyed me, sure, but she never had a chance to get under my skin the way Elsie did, and I'm just not sure why. It's just maybe it's her voice. Yeah, her voice is a little annoying. I have this I have this thing and this is incredibly shallow of me, but if I don't like a, a character's voice, it just kills the whole thing for me. It's not shallow, it's fucking common sense. <laughs> <laughs> but what was I saying? Um so yeah, she she annoyed me, but for the most part I thought the characters were fine. There was a little bit of actually development in some spots that would then get ditched by the beginning of the next episode because TV Formula <laughs> Because T V audiences love the status quo. Um Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, like uh, they would do like the advancement of Nick and Audrey's relationship, or Randy would go through some like coming of age moment and oh. then completely forget it. Oh, the other one that gets to me is is Animal. Animal is annoying. That that is not Hank Azaria. I, he's so much more funny in the movie. Hank, he's one of the only things I like about that movie. Right, Hank Azaria is like the bright spot. He is he is the little kernel of hope inside the shit. He is like Patrick Warburton in the underdog movie. He's he's the only thing about it where you're like, you know what? That's good. That's funny. You know, it, it's it's like him and him and uh and fucking the guy from Mission Impossible. It's like Jurassic Park three. There's this big pile of shit, but in there there is a walkie-talkie that can save your life. <laughs> Technically, it's a satellite phone. Hank Azaria is that satellite phone. <laughs> He is, Amidst the pile of dinosaur shit. He is, he is the good thing within the shit that you have to dig through to get to him. Um, You're pulling out bones and watches and fucking digging through crap like diarrhea. And then you find the satellite phone. You call your ex-girlfriend and she sends the fucking military in to help you. I like how the series decided to handle the whole Mayor Ebert thing. <laughs> Let's give him a mustache. Yeah, that was weird. Um, oh, it's no longer parody. <laughs> Yeah, well, I imagine that was for the same reason as... Well, I imagine... Because that actor is a pretty big actor. The guy who played So Mayor I imagine Ebert. it was the same reason he can't... They couldn't get the rights to the actor. I figured it was because Roger and Ebert... Uh, or, uh, not Roger and Ebert, Siskel. Roger and Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> Siskel and Ebert called them out on that shit in the movie review. Yeah, they were like, oh, very funny. Um, <laughs> Fuck you guys. Um, yep. You should have had them step on us. Yeah, it's like, if you're going to put us in a monster movie to make fun of us, how about you fucking do something about it? Do it. Kill me. Kill me, I'm here. Um. <laughs> oh, that movie is horrible. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was surprisingly well written. I do like the character of Zilla Jr. Um, Zilla Jr. is fun. He, he's cool. Whenever they call him Godzilla, I cringe a little bit. Um, on the inside. But then I remember my, remind myself, he's closer to Godzilla. Yeah. He's got something coming out of his mouth. Um, <laughs> he's like... <laughs> he's like Diet Godzilla? Diet Zilla? He, he's like a light... He's like got the lightest possible incarnation of... 
No, that's because he's so he's not got he's Zilla with powers is what he is. But they even they even draw him a little differently because you know how Zilla always walks hunched over like a T Rex. Yeah, he, every now and then Zilla Junior will walk upright. Zilla Junior will fucking stride, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. On occasion, there's a whole video game on the Game Boy where it's just you playing as Zilla Junior and you're just striding. <laughs> You're walking like a man. That was the only thing from the show that I was exposed to as a child. Oh, yeah, because I was about to ask you, because you, you posted something about it recently on Facebook, and I was like, well, if you haven't seen the show, how have you played that game? Um, well, it was... It's just like you have, you don't have access to that unless you've seen it. It's actually pretty simple, Bill. You see, I went to a toy store that also sold uh, Game Boy games. Toys R Us? Um, no, some other like local thing that we had. Uh, my mom got it for me offline. The Godzilla Game Boy game. Yeah. Anyway, um, it was it was after the show was like long over. It was like two thousand two, maybe. That strikes me as odd. Um, anyway, I got that and I got the uh, Godzilla Destroy All Monsters Game Boy game, which is one of the worst pieces of shit I have ever played in my life. I got it, and I was like, okay, well, it's it's Godzilla the series, but it's. It's about the closest thing to a Godzilla game on a Game Boy I'm going to get, except for that weird thing where there's, like, vines and you have to, like... <laughs> That's what I was just referring to, yeah. Punch rocks and solve puzzles, that game. is It confuses me. I still have it, but it confuses the fuck out of me. I have it somewhere. I could probably dig it up somewhere. Um, I've got it in a bag with all my other leftover Game Boy games, but anyway. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah, I, I did play the game. I just never watched the show. So, I... Uh, I was actually happy to find out while watching the show that they didn't make up those monsters for the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah those those monsters are from the show. Um, In fact, I recently replayed the game as I was watching the show, and meanwhile, um, meanwhile, while I was annexing Poland, um, <laughs> Colonel Logan, and I discovered um, that the game because I never I never read the fucking dialogue boxes as a kid. Yeah, who who gives a fuck? I didn't read the fucking dialogue boxes this time. I did, um because I care about story these days. Um, and it's it's pretty much just a straight-up adaptation of the show. Like, the episodes happen in a different order, but all of the plots in that game are from the show. Really? I, I never read the dialogue either. I just cut to... I never got that far. I would just, like, fucking walk and then die. Um, really? Yeah, I never got that far. You see, you're supposed to shoot fireballs at, at the tanks, Bill. You, 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 can't, you, you can't just walk. Also, there's there's I have the same problem with that game as I have with Godzilla Smash. It's like he's way too weak, um, especially in Godzilla Smash when it is the real Godzilla. Um, yeah, that is a problem with that game, isn't it? You would think that I can understand him having to take damage because it's a video game, but boy, that health bar goes down fast. Yeah, and and if you're timed, you are fucked. Oh, I'm, I was so glad. The most recent update of the game, I just updated it like yesterday. They made the timed levels less difficult. <laughs> Yeah, because they're impossible. They were, I, I passed one of them, and the second one was... I was stuck. I was like, yeah, you just can't do it. They, they they made it... I don't know what they did. I don't know if they gave you more time or made the clock go slower. Or, I don't know how they did it, but they made... They slowed down time. Or if they added more of those... Because that's the other thing. Some of the tiles that you break give you more time. Yeah, yeah they have a little clock on them, yeah. But there's never enough of them. No, sometimes no, you'll go for like a long stretches of the level without getting any, and it's like, how am I supposed to do this shit? How am I supposed to get past two waves in 15 seconds? Especially with how long it takes to take down one wave. And maybe it takes fucking forever. Maybe I have at least one atomic blast to help me out. Maybe not. Oh, God, fucking God forbid. My favorite thing. It takes forever to build up your meter in that game, because every time you make a move... After you make a move, it's like an RPG game. The, the, the enemy fires at you, and it takes a lot of your health away. Well, sometimes it so, depends on the enemy. Some of the enemies wait a few turns before they fire. They're very generous like that. Godzilla's just standing there like, just wait for it. I'm going to fucking get you. I'm going to get you. And then you get to one of those levels where you fight through like four fucking waves. You're tired as shit. Your health bar's in the gutter. You ain't got no atomic energy left. Fucking Muto comes out. I never got to the... I haven't gotten to the Mutos yet. Dude, those fucking Mutos. Are they from the movie or are they like original kaiju? No, oh, they're 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 the mutos from the movie. 
Oh, okay. So you're fighting the winged Muto in the uh, in the Tokyo level. So I'm assuming that when I get to to San Francisco, assuming that I ever get to San Francisco, I'll be fighting the female. I'm I'm assuming. I left my heart in San Francisco. Also, ever since I did that update, it says that there's more levels coming soon, and the thing isn't on any landmass; it's just down in the ocean. So I'm thinking maybe underwater level. Eh? Ooh. Actually, no. And that, that must be an original kaiju, right? Cause Actually, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm thinking it might just be Hawaii. Oh. God damn it. Um, what is there to do in Hawaii? It was a five-second long fight. <laughs> Give me an underwater level. It wasn't even a fight, really. It was the Wing Muto tried to fly away, Godzilla swatted at it a couple of times, then he went into the water. Why does game got to stick by, by the show, by the movie? Why not expand the fuck out of this universe? Why you do this, Godzilla Smash? Why you do this? This has ceased to be a conversation about Godzilla the series. Uh, why do they call it Godzilla Smash 3? I don't know. There is not a Godzilla Smash 1 or 2. Yeah, we're missing parts 1 and 2. Maybe there's some other game series called Smash? And maybe there are three Smashes, and this is like a Godzilla edition? So it's called Godzilla Smash 3? no sense. Kind of like how they would do like special editions of like The Sims 2. Or Angry Birds. Or Angry Birds, yeah. I'm going to look this up. But to get back to the series... Ah, what's your favorite episode? I was just about to talk about that. My favorite episode... Most people would probably point to the Kaiju Wars three-parter. And that is a close second. I love the fuck out of that three-parter. But my overall favorite episode of the show is actually the Robo Yeti episode. Oh, competition? That's awesome. There is so much. It's such a great reference. The whole episode is a, just, just a string of references to classic Godzilla. The scientist who creates Robo Yeti is named uh, Ifukube. Or no, is it Ifukube or is it... I think it's Ifukube. I think it's... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Her name is Dr. Ifukube. Oh, that's right. Yeah, there's a lot of references to classic Godzilla. The Robo Yeti's design after they peel off the fake skin is pretty much just Mechanic Kong. <laughs> Yep. An updated <laughs> version of Mechanic Kong. There's this great running gag where the ja- all the Japanese people pronounce it Gojira. Gojira, yeah. There's this part where they're, and they're just like, no, it's Godzilla, lady. Yeah, and there's this other part earlier on in the episode where, like, <laughs> this is a great little reference. I th- there's this little Japanese kid and this mom, and I think they're on, like, a plane or something. And he, yeah. and he looks out of the window, and he sees Zilla Jr. Um, swimming. Yeah. And he says, hey, Mom, look, it's Gojira. And she says, don't be silly. What would Gojira be doing in uh, in Japan? Ha, 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 ha! That was, that was great. <laughs> the, uh, the main enemy the of that question, episode, though. The other question is, if, if Matthew Broderick and his team, because I refuse to call him Nick Pops up, whatever. Nick Stopolis. Nick, Nip, uh, yeah, Nick Hippopotamus. <laughs> Nick Gothopotamus. If they're flying to Tokyo and Godzilla is following them, how does that work? Because a flight from the east coast of America to Tokyo is going to cut across the USA, right? Godzilla would have had to swim around... Yeah, but he did it in the movie. He would have to swim around South America. (laughs) Well, he would have to go through the Gulf of Mexico. Unless he takes the Panama Canal, maybe. No, weirder things have happened in that show. Weirder coincidences have happened where Godzilla will just, po- or Zilla Jr. will just pop up, just like, like, and it's like, how the fuck did he know to follow them there? Look, it's Godzilla, and he just pops out of nowhere, and I'm like, what? how would you not see him coming? <laughs> or no, at least when Godzilla goes to Loch Ness. Of course, this is the same group of individuals. This is the same universe where you can lose Godzilla in a city. Yeah, I guess, or Zilla. Um... Right, right, of course. Well, it, at least in the in the Loch Ness monster episode, they show Godzilla following the team. Yeah, that was good. Um, but even still, it was just like, but even the how does Godzilla get into Loch Ness without being noticed? I don't know, man. Ooh, there's actually another episode that I'm really fond of. That's not the uh, Monster Wars three parter. And it's a later one. It's 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 closer to the end of the series. You remember an episode called Scale? Yeah, oh, that one's really good. Yeah, that's such a good episode. Oh, so good. It's so fucking good. Especially with with what they do at the end there with Audrey's character. Yeah. She has this like great moment, and I'm like, you're gonna go right back to being that selfish bitch in the next episode. But you you have your little moment. You. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. 
I just and you just get you get to see Monster Island and how it functions and shit. Oh, it was so good. Yeah, yeah. And the whole thing is done in like found footage style. Well, not the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The majority of it is like this found footage format. Which right, using of, of, from animals camera. Yeah. yeah it's, it's really interesting. It's a great episode. Yeah, really good episode. Really well told story. Interesting world building piece. Um, yeah, I like the idea that there's this evil organization that's like the opposite of Heat. But it's like the PETA of of mutations. Um, right, right. People for uh, the ethical treatment of fucking monsters. <laughs> Wait, ethical treatment of fucking monsters? Um, yes! Pet FM? Yes. <laughs> pet f- Pet... Pet f- Pet f- Pet f- Pet f- Whatever, we just, we just want to fuck monsters, man. I just want to fuck Angiris. He likes it. <laughs> How do you know what Angiris likes? Because I know Angiris, man. You don't know Angiris. I even know his favorite lubricant. <laughs> you know what it is? Banana what is oil. <laughs> Very well done, Dylan. Very well done. Very nice. Um, the next five callers will get a, a bottle of banana oil with their Godzilla <laughs> <flashlight. laughs> We have to make that joke if we ever do that commercial. We have to. Banana oil. Banana oil. <laughs> oh, my it's so funny that we make that joke because George Takei was vo- was a voice in Godzilla Raids again. I know. I know. And he's the one who told the story about the banana oil. I know. Oh, you did, you did know that? I did know that. So what the fuck am I telling that story? Um, I don't know. You just explained the reasoning behind my joke to the audience. Well, now they know. Way to kill the comedy. Fuck you, Dylan. Um, Way to go, Wilford Billy. Um... Fuck, hey, don't even. Don't fucking even. That's officially your name for when you fuck something up now. You s- no, it's not officially my name. It's officially what I'm going to call you when you fuck something up. It used to be Mr. Tokuatsu, now it's Wilford Bill. Blow me, Dylan. Blow me. No, thank you. Um, oh, I hate you. <laughs> um, Um, but I think we should probably actually talk about the Monster Wars three-parter. That three-parter. Yeah, oh, shit, really good, really good. That three-parter, though. Way to take an alien from, like, a really bad episode and make them a badass villain. Oh, horrible episode, horrible episode. And make them, like, this badass, like, the exilians of your universe. Way, way to pull that off. I only wish that they had found a way to incorporate, like, Cameron Winter into that episode. Cameron Winters is also very cool. The 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 few times that he makes appearances after that are not that impressive. After his first appearance, yeah, like when he fought when when he's just talking like I'm gonna clone Godzilla. Well, not really. I'm just gonna create a, a green version of him and have it attack Manhattan. Also, and nobody will ever think to look up. Ha! Also, its mouth opens like the thing or a graboid or something. Um, and nobody will think to look at it. Like you notice how all the like the um. All the shots of supposedly Godzilla before that before we find out, like it's always obscured by fog and they never look up. And I'm just like, why don't you look up? You'll see it's not Godzilla. There are also a lot of episodes where I'm like, you are gonna have some Godzilla, um, in your Godzilla show, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, very much so. Where to give you an example, one of the later episodes. Mm-hmm. One that I think could be really cool if they, A, made it a two-parter, and B, gave Godzilla more to do. Do you remember Dragma? Yeah, where they go to the future. Yeah, so much good stuff in that episode. Not yeah. nearly enough. <laughs> They're just like, yeah, Godzilla's dead. Um, not, enough, not nearly enough Godzilla. The other problem is, and this is a problem with the show's limited runtime, they really should have done more two-parters as opposed to... Uh, they really should have gone for quality over quantity. Um, they should have done it like Justice League, just if, if like every episode's a two parter. Right, right. They should have either done that or done like a continuous story, like fucking D- yeah. DBZ in the in the Godzilla universe. That's what my ideal Godzilla cartoons like, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's like Godzilla but DBZ. It's like Final Wars, basically, um, but um, but written as if it's the high stake continuity. Um, right, right, right. Anyway. Yeah, that that's a great episode. It has a lot of great ideas, but the problem is it's it's twenty minutes long. They really should have made it a, a two parter. It, it literally feels like the Heat team is there for like ten minutes and they leave. Yeah, yeah, and the problem is, 
10 minutes, as short as that is, it's still half the fucking runtime. They don't, yeah, yeah, they don't yeah. have enough time to do everything that they need to do with this scenario. There are a lot of great episodes in here that make use of the fact that it's a 20 minute show. We're just going to do a quick one off story. We're going to have surprisingly good science exposition. And then it's, we're going to call it a day. But with this Dragon episode, it's like we're going to set up this alternate future. We're going to go all like fucking Terminator future trunks up in this bitch. But we're gonna... Giant monsters take over the world. And where's Godzilla? He's fucking dead. It's basically the, the Pacific Rim concept without the giant robots or the aliens. Or Godzilla. <clears throat> or Pacific Rim didn't have Godzilla. <laughs> yeah, but they don't either. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, te- technically they never had Godzilla in that show. Um, True dad. Anyway... High five, high five, bro, high five. They probably should have done that as either a two or even three parter. Oh no, not a three. You could get it. Nah, two is enough. You could get it done in two. What you do is use the entire first part in the future. In the future. Show more of the future. Show more of the impact. Sure, it wouldn't have any Zilla Junior in it because he's dead in the future. But I would be able to forgive it because a he would be in part two, and b you would have all this interesting character stuff because all the stuff that Walther there is pretty good. Yeah, Mendel's like this like badass fucking like ass kicker. Uh Hicks is has a missing arm and leg. He's cyborg. Uh, he's motherfucking cyborg. Well I love I love the moment where he's, he's like He's Call a Tech from the Doctor Who episode of Town Called Mercy that I rewatched earlier tonight, thus prompting me to make that reference. Um Yeah, absolutely. Well he's it's just like he's like um I love the moment where he's just like we we lost the, we lost a lot of good men in this war, Nick. I re- I tried everything. I released every monster on Monster Island. Oh, that that moment where I was like, oh shit, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Do it as a two parter, and you could have showed some of that like in flashback. Actually, you know what? That's how you work Godzilla into it to give him more screen time. Do show him show him getting killed by the Dragmas. Give me some flashbacks. Do do. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Take your premise and do something with it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I feel like it's completely – not completely wasted, but I feel like it's not used enough. And then when they get back to their time, they have such little runtime left to conclude the story that they have to introduce this mad scientist and give this random really quick explanation for his motivations and try to just shove all this stuff into it that really should have been its own episode entirely. Absolutely. I completely – they're just like, where is he? He's on Long Island. All right, let's go. Why is he doing it? He hates humans. All right, then. Let's go kick his ass. They basically break into this guy's house unannounced and just kick his ass. Well, it's like, and then Godzilla bursts in and kills all his experiments. It's like Terminator 2 where Miles Dyson is just enjoying a night with his family. Fucking Sarah Connor bursts in. Bursts in, shoots him. About to waste him. The magazines on the table are really organized and they're a mess. So... Suddenly, fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger shows up. He's a robot. Don't do it. He's a robot. He pulls the skin off his arm. <laughs> Next thing you know, you're you're. They put this all into the last five minutes of that episode of Godzilla the series. Next thing you know, you're you're having corporate. You're like involved in corporate espionage, and you're having to like destroy all these files at your work. Then you get shot. Yeah. Then you blow yourself up. That was just not his night. No, it was just a horrible night. And then they're driving down a road, and Sarah Connor's doing narration, and the Terminator burns itself in a fucking lava tank. It is a bad day to be Miles Dyson, is is the long and short. <laughs> I always felt so bad. That's the point of Terminator 2. It's not like, oh, you can make the future whatever you want. No, it's a, it sucks to be black and named Miles Dyson, Miles Dyson. I always used to feel so sorry for Miles Dyson in that movie. I'm like, yeah. you have fucked his shit up. Did you ever watch um the Sarah Connor Chronicles? I didn't. You did or you didn't? I did not. I watched the first season. It was really good. Was it actually? It was really good, yeah. I avoided it for fear of of it turning into like It is it's it's its own continuity though. I thought it was gonna be really shitty. <laughs> and that's why I didn't watch it. No, it's actually pretty good. It's better than Terminator Three and Salvation. Well okay. <laughs> But I mean, Salvation's not horrible. Um, I I actually enjoy Terminator Three more than I do Salvation. Are you fucking kidding me? Not on like an objective level. Are you out of your mind? I get more enjoyment. Dude, are you okay? I'm worried about you. I get more enjoyment out of sitting down and watching Terminator Three because it's so fucking goofy. 
<laughs> it's so bad. And I have such nostalgia for it and how bad it is. Alright, I can kind of see that point. I kind of see that point. And they do the whole Doctor Strange love ending. Yeah, alright, I kind of see that point. Well, but Salvation... you got to understand that Salvation is a decent movie. I mean, it's not great, but it's... It's not horrible. I see Salvation as, like, a good effort. Um, yeah. It's, it's like, you know, just give just give Salvation, like, a participation award. So, such such nice ideas in Salvation. Bat- C- casting Christian Bale as future John Connor? That's a good casting choice. Well done. Telling him to act, he's, telling him to act like he's still Batman. Bad choice. Uh, that was a bad idea. Um, this is not a Kevin Spacey playing Gene Wilder playing Lex Luthor situation. Hmm. Uh-huh. Um, no, it's way worse than that. Um, Christian Bale playing Batman, playing John Connor, playing Batman. What? Um, yes. <laughs> because sometimes there's a man. Sometimes there's a man. And sometimes there's a man. <laughs> sometimes there's diabetes. Sometimes there's a robot who looks like a man. <laughs> it just struck me that Sam Neill's mustache is reminiscent of Wilford Brimley's you just mustaches, and you just think Wilford Brimley now. I think that's what's going on with you, Dylan. <laughs> that's what's happening. That's what ha- that's what's happening in Dylan's head. Are you telling me that that guy from Mythbusters is not a baby Wilford Brimley? <laughs> what's that dude's name? I don't know. Fucking uh, Jamie. Jamie Heineman. He's just this... Jamie Heineman. Oh God. He's a he's a baby Wilford Brimley. <laughs> also, he's ginger. Yeah, and he looks like a walrus, just like all old men do. Actually, no. It turns out Wolfer Brimley was was a time lord, and he died of his diabetes. Huh. He, di- he died of diabetes and regenerated <laughs> into baby Wolfer Brimley from his buster. Into into Jamie Heineman. And the reason they both exist at the same time is because time travel. Um, exactly. It's the same reason why the tenth Doctor can like say hi to the eleventh Doctor. Right, and go on an adventure with him, and then forget all about it later. Um, Go off and die, um, and not want to turn into the eleventh Doctor. It's kind of sad. You have this fiftieth anniversary, and it, it feels it fills the tenth Doctor with all this hope, and he goes back to his own timeline. All that gets erased. He has that angsty ass death. Yeah, and then turns into the eleventh Doctor. Um, I don't want to go. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes sense in terms of what he sees of the eleventh Doctor, with him being really like depressed. Um, I don't want to go. Too bad. Well, the moment that I think sold me on the I don't want to go speech is when he when Eleven goes, I have absolutely no idea when the war doctor is like, did you ever count how many children were on, were on Gallifrey that day? And uh, Eleven goes, I have absolutely no idea. And then the tenth doctor goes, 2.46 billion. You did count. I don't remember. You forgot. How could you forget something like that? I moved on. Uh, and then the, what, is, what does Ten say? How do you count how many dead children there are? I don't know. Especially, especially if you don't have bodies. All you have is charred remains. Space dust. No, he, he, no, he would go back to like, I'm sure the TARDIS would have it as like in its databanks. Fucking like census records. Yeah, sure, why not? Okay. We could go online and find out the population of fucking... Rwanda on a certain day. Yeah, but the way they worded it, it's not like, did you ever find out how many children were on Galfair? It's like, did you ever count? <laughs> did you ever sit there with your pen and your pad of paper and <laughs> fucking... Just fucking pull out all their names and shit and, like, lay them out and just, like, figure out, okay, Johnny, Timmy, there was little Cindy. There was little Susie down the street. There was, there was little Susie who down in Whoville. Um, Grew up, turned into the Ronnie. That was weird. Um... <laughs> It was quite strange. Um, have you heard uh, the rumors that the Ronnie is going to be in C- C- uh, Series 8? And there was my first girlfriend regenerated into a dude. That was awkward. Um, <laughs> awkward Christmas with the family, that was. Um, <laughs> Hello, this is Jill. Although now she's going by Jack. <laughs> Captain Jack. Um, also, she's she's played by Adam Sandler. <laughs> oh, how old are the cars? I, I have no idea. That's my Adam Sandler impression, everybody. I have no idea why I did this. 
Why you do this, Doctor? Why you do this, Time Lords? Um, <laughs> time Lords. Time Lords. Um, uh, anything else you want to say about Godzilla the series, Dylan? Uh, I feel like we didn't devote enough time to it. Um, maybe we can come back to it at some point, but because uh, we're kind of running out of time. Um, I feel like the monster designs were lacking sometimes. I think sometimes they kind of over... There are way too many bugs. I think that's my There are way problem. too many bugs. Also, sometimes it's just like giant bat. Giant bat, giant... Giant, like, giant Komodo dragon. What a weird fucking episode that is. That was awesome, though. Fuck you. It's such a weird fucking episode. But it's so awesome. What's awesome about... It's so it falls in love. It's so cute. With a Komodo dragon. Which is adorable! They are of a different species. But the... She, fire breath, Dylan! I don't care about the fire breath. An iguana and a Komodo dragon do not mate. But they're mutated! That does not compute. But they're mutated. Who cares? And, she, and then there was... And Gamera was in it? Fucking Gamera? It's, it's like the quote from Doctor Who. I'm a Time Lord. And you're a big fish. Think of the children. <laughs> oh, was that from Series 5? That was Vampires of Venice, yes. Vampires of Venice. <laughs> I do remember that. That was a, That's such a good episode. Um, Vampires of Venice? Yeah, you didn't like that one? I thought it was an alright episode. I wouldn't call it good. What about that scene where the, where the, dude, where the black dude from Venice is wearing Rory's t-shirt? <laughs> that was funny. Good scene. <laughs> Still not blown away by the episode itself. I'm, I'm, but it's so. I think the beginning is a little slow. It just, it, just, it just didn't make much of an impression on me. I remember that "Think of the Children" line. And other than that, I'm like, what happened? That's such a good line. The vampires were fish. What? Um. I'm a time lord. You're a fish thing. Think of the children. You're, you're a big fish. She's a movie by Tim Burton. Um. <laughs> Which means you definitely don't want to have children with her because they'll have scissors for hands. Um. They'll all look like Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you know what? Fuck you. That's awesome. Bad penguin designs. Um, Actually, you know what? Fuck you. That's awesome. If my children could be Beetlejuice, that would not be awesome. <laughs> That'd be terrible. Your kids would be Michael Keaton. All right, that's kind of awesome. Um, <laughs> your problem is. I don't know. Never mind. I, I I shouldn't have complained. My kids would be Batman. What's the problem here? Yeah, but like not my like my least favorite Batman. Um. I don't think that's fair. He's a good Batman in a in a substandard adaptation. Yeah. He didn't have to... Whoa, Dylan, I put the wrong thumbnail for SOS. Did you put a DFOS thumbnail on it? Yep! <laughs> that's awesome. We're taking over. <laughs> it, does, it does kind of feel like an episode of DFOS, though, doesn't it? With, with the diabetes. <laughs> I, I, oh, damn it, I screwed up. <laughs> what else is new, Wilford Billy? Fuck you, Dylan, I will kill you. Da, 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 da. Fucking Dylan McCandles. That doesn't bother me, Bill. I'm used to that. That wound is old and healed. Wilfer Billy is still fresh. Still oozing with pain. I know how long it takes you to get over things. You still haven't watched Kill Bill. That's more out of lack of interest. Um, Why? I just don't care. Why? I've got better things to do. I'm watching House, man. Da, na, 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 fuck, na. fuck House. Oh, no! I'm never watching Kill Bill now. Fuck you. House is... There is only House. You know what? You know what? Uma Thurman is an ordinary guy. Burning down the house. Blow me, Dylan. That's all. Blow me. That's Sorry, everybody. We have to end now, so that way I can I can fly to t Tennessee and kick Dylan's ass. That was entirely nonsensical, that joke. But but I'm I'm happy with it. No. Oh. So you don't like the episode where Audrey and Nick go on an Arctic adventure with Zilla Junior? It's just so weird. <laughs> I like it though. I'm like, who wrote this? Why you do this, Godzilla? The original concept for the for the show was going to be that it was just going to be a female Zilla. 
okay? And they changed it because they didn't want to have another quote-unquote Godzilla in the show. I'm like, this is the show that spun off in 98. I wouldn't have gave a fuck. Wait, is that the, was that the original premise? The original idea was that it was going to be a female Zilla, and they changed it to a mutant Komodo dragon. That's, oh, you know what? That would have been awesome. Yeah, that would have been awesome. Well, the problem might have been, though, that uh, they didn't want to have, like, a... Uh... Maybe they maybe they didn't want people to get confused between the two designs. Well, well, I saw a rough design and they designed it in a way to make it look sort of more feminine. <laughs> gave it tits. They gave it fucking tits. Um, fucking titties. The other problem is, according to movie continuity, they're all asexual. Yeah, that's a problem too. Which is also happen. a reason why he wouldn't fall in love with a giant Komodo dragon. No, it's still cute, Dylan. Fuck you. Fuck you. It's cute. I don't um, care if it's cute. Puppies are cute. Fuck puppies. <laughs> Fuck cute. I just want logic. A lot. Dylan, don't complicate Godzilla with the series with logic. Uh, a logical decision arrived at logically. Um, but, but, dude. Hang on, I'm looking up this concept art. All right, that is not it. Um, if you go to the um, to the wiki the Wikizilla um, entry for Komodo Thrax, I think that's her name. Mm. Komodo Thrax. Oh, found it. Hang on, I gotta look at the picture. It's a pretty rough design and honestly kind of bad, but they would have kept working on it, I'm sure. Um. Angiris. The problem is that Zillas are supposed to be asexual. More so than that, the, this particular Zilla is apparently sterile. Uh, let's see here. I can't find a picture. Though apparently there were supposed to be classic Toho monsters in the show. They just couldn't get the rights to them. Zilla in... Yeah, for some reason Zilla Jr. is sterile. Don't ask why. I don't have a reason. Oh! Did you find it? All right, never mind. I like Komodo Thrax better. Um, I was I was about that is horrible. I told you it's it's a rough fucking design. Um, they would have had to do some some more to it. Well, really, the problem is the neck. What's going on with the neck? Why is she so long? Because she's feminine. That's weird. Um, that doesn't make any sense to if me. If they just made the head look a little bit more like Zilla. Well, not even the head itself. It's that weird bendy thing they got going on with the neck. What, what's going on with that? Yeah, what's up with that? Why you do this, Godzilla the series producers? Um, Why you do this, TriStar? If they, Why you do this, Iron Man? Um, if, if the neck was normal, it wouldn't be such a bad design. That's the. Nah, it look, if the head looked like a little bit more like Zilla, it'd be fine. Yeah, that's, that's really the only problem with it. It, it still would have made a little bit more sense than a giant. Guy. I also don't mind the spines being a different, like a different arrangement. That's fine. I mean, it's supposed to look a little. It's a female. It's a female. You could make the argument that maybe the male Zilla has those kinds of spines for display, like with a lot of male animals in the animal kingdom. The problem is they're supposed to be asexual. Yeah, yeah, that's a problem. They shouldn't. Have, they should never done that though, Dylan, because that was fucking stupid. Um, I know, but you can't. They, and that's why they wrote it out of the show because it's fucking stupid. You can't open your show though with the with, in the very first episode with the hatching of an egg from an asexual parent, <laughs> and then write it off near the end. It doesn't work that way. Yeah, but maybe. But they sh they should have just never done that in the movie because that was fucking stupid. You're just you're um, just trying to you're just trying to to fucking uh, to fucking to, to what's the word I'm I'm looking for? You're just trying to fuck me up. That's what you're trying to do. No, you're just <laughs> you're just trying to what's it called? Um, when you I have no idea what you're trying to when say. When you try to make something seem all right. You're trying to uh, to rationalize. Yeah, it. you're just trying to rationalize because because you like. The Godzilla Komodo Thrax relationship, okay? You can go have your fucking Zilla Junior Komodo. Yeah, no, I like it. I think it's. I think it's cute. You can go have your freaking Godzilla Junior Komodo Thrax slash fiction. I don't. That wouldn't be slash fiction because it's not gay. It's actually straight. Um, what do you call it? Then? 
It's 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 fucking it'd be hentai, literotica. Actually, you know what? It can't be gay. It's be kaiju erotica. Actually, you know what? It can't be gay because he's asexual. <laughs> no, he's not though. And the whole in the show, he's not. He he's sterile. He's a sterile asexual. Whatever. <laughs> So then he's not asexual if he's sterile. These are two exact reasons why he would not fall in love with a female... You could be, but you could be heterosexual and sterile. Okay, well, I understand that. Duh. Um, these are two reasons why he would not fall in love with a female giant mutated well, Moto he's, Dragon. He's lonely? Maybe he's lonely. Lonely. Yeah. But they don't characterize it that way. He forms like a, 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 a family bond between her and the egg. And then when they he did all the family bond with Nick Tatopoulos, it's like his father. And then when they fall into the abyss, he's just like, "All right, well that shit's over." And then he comes back. No, he goes on. He goes on revenge. He he hunts after the turtle for vengeance. Remember? Um. Why you do this, Bill? Um, why you do this, Wilford Beery? Um. <laughs> um. So yeah. What was I saying? Uh, we were talking about how I find the Komodo Thrax episode stupid and and contrived, and how you think it's quote cute. I do think it's cute, which is now the standard of 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 um of critique. Is it cute? <laughs> well, I'm just—it's a guilty pleasure. I'm no, it's not a guilty pleasure. I think it's fine. At least they kept up the fact that he's sterile. At least that bit of continuity is left untouched. Yeah, because they couldn't crossbreed an iguana and a Komodo dragon. <laughs> Why not, Dylan? Why not? Also, they would have had to explain how the egg came out of her so quickly. And why it's only one. Lizards lay a bunch of them. Yeah. As, Zilla, as Zilla does in the movie. Yeah, they don't explain that either. The fuck, Tristar. Um. The fuck, man? The fuck? We fucking gang up on them? We're just like, what the fuck you doing? What the fuck, man? What the fuck? Expect an explanation here. Man, fuck you, bitches. You will know my name is the Lord. <laughs> I will rain my vengeance upon thee. We had the opportunity to go after them for fucking up Godzilla in the first place, but we decide to die on the hill of... L Iguanas can't fuck Komodo dragons. The whole time, it's nothing but us quoting Sam Jackson. Although, really, why couldn't they? The AK-47, when you absolutely, positively have to kill every motherfucker in the room, except no substitutes. Um, what? Why can't an iguana fuck a Komodo dragon? You, they cross species of snakes all the time. I had a corn snake when I was a kid, and a garter snake when I was a yeah, kid, yeah. and they fought, and, and they had little garter snake, corn snake hybrids. Yes, and there are other animals that um, go through hybridization as well, like, for example, lions and tigers, giving us the famous li uh, liger. The problem right. is, you see, I'm not sure because... No, it makes perfect sense. It doesn't make perfect sense. You're the only problem in the, in the real animal kingdom is that there, that a, an iguana, a Komodo dragon is a lot fucking bigger than an iguana. It's um, not the only problem. Of the, the real... Me, because, you know, a sheep and an alpaca are quite... I mean, a sheep and a llama are quite different, but we have alpacas. The mechanics yep. the mechanics of that is pretty mind-boggling. But here's the thing. It's not, it's, not a, it's not a matter of size of the animal. Um, it's a matter of genetic similarity versus genetic uh, variability. If two species are too genetically different from one another, then they cannot hybrid. This is why a human cannot hybrid with a gorilla. We're in the same family, but we're too genetically different from one another to form any hybrid. Therefore, all right, I guess that. Meant it. All right, all right, but what's? But how is that any different from a garter snake fucking a corn snake? Because apparently garter snakes and corn snakes are close enough on the snake family tree that they can fucking hy hybridize. I don't know what the rules are with Komodo dragons and iguanas. I don't know if they're similar enough but, to form hybrid. It's weird because we can't fuck a chimp and make a chimp-human hybrid. It's, it's, it just doesn't work. Exactly. It's because some species are more genetically similar to each other than others. You can have... So, so for instance, there's a 2% difference between a chimp... Like, we are closer to a chimpanzee than a chimpanzee is to is to a gorilla genetically. Yes. So something about how close would a garter snake have to be to a corn snake where that would make sense, where they could fuck and have and have 
hybrid babies. The other problem is, I don't even think it's a matter of, see, the way we're kind of talking right now, it kind of sounds like we're saying it's like a percentage. Like, if you are this percent different from the other... No, 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 no. It, I mean, that's just a theory, though, right? If you're if you're similar enough genetically, then you should be able to fuck. But it's it's not really a matter of percentages. It's not quite as easy as that. It's more about which specific genes are different. You know what I mean? Okay. So, like... There's but then how, why can a, a lion only, fuck a tiger? There's only 2% difference between us and a chimp, but part of that 2% is the genes that would... That oh, I see. It's not It's not how close they are. It's what part of their DNA is close. I got you. It's like what, which parts of the DNA are different, you know? So like a lion and a tiger apparently are similar enough in their reproductive thing that they are able to <laughs> to form a hybrid, a viable hybrid. Mm. Right. Right, 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 right. Um, you, people, dogs are probably the best example. All the fucking dogs in the world, their DNA is almost identical. It's just a matter of which genes have been switched on or off. That's why you can cross pretty much any dog you want. Right, right. Um, makes sense. Alright, I accept that. Uh, So could an iguana... And a Komodo dragon, fuck and make babies. I don't know. But in this case, no, because Zilla Jr. is a asexual. Just because you don't like the cuteness of it, Zilla Jr. isn't allowed to be happy. No, no, no. The reason here is that Zilla is two things. A, he's asexual. B, he's sterile. <laughs> Alright, fine. Be that way, Dylan. Um, I will be that way. Fuck you, Dylan! Also, isn't part of the danger of the Zillas that they reproduce like crazy so they could like take over the world and become the new dominant species on the planet? planet? But yeah. their children are sterile, apparently. Well, that was just a coincidence. That way they could write that fucking bullshit out because it was fucking stupid. They should have just had Nick and his team fucking neuter him. <laughs> that, but then they would have had to de- they would have had to deal with that in a children's show. Like, like they didn't have to have him be that big when he first met up with the Heat team. What if they had gotten him when he was still baby-sized? They could have neutered him. Yeah, but then they would have had to explain that. Two seconds of dialogue, we have rendered him sterile. And the children wouldn't have known what they were talking about. There's all- but then adults would be like, Wait, they just cut that lizard's dick off. <laughs> There's all kinds of adults. My kid can't watch this. There's all kinds. All right, all right, Dylan, Dylan, There's all, all right, kinds let's, of... let's, let's play. No, 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 let's play out this scenario. You're the, you're writing that episode, and I'm 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 a concerned parent. I'm I'm a part of the board of tr- of 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 trustees that looks over television shows and deems whether or not they are appropriate for children. Do, okay. Do you still have one of Ru- those. Yes. What are they doing with their jobs? <laughs> <laughs> They're just sitting there twiddling their thumbs. Have you ever seen some of the shit that's on TV these days? Sponge, did you remember that? Remember that? Well, it's, it still happens. You remember that fucking moment from SpongeBob, where fucking Spon- <laughs> where he was giving Gary a bath and he goes, "Don't drop the soap." <laughs> fucking, remember back in the fifties when you couldn't even show a fucking toilet on television? <laughs> <laughs> there was this big, there was this big stink about fucking <laughs> Leave It to Beaver because they showed the bathroom. <laughs> Why, why was that a problem? Because you weren't allowed to see the bathroom in in TV shows, especially the toilet. <laughs> it was considered. I, I remember we did the video. Uh, considered... We did the day of the Doctor Who with uh, with Duke, and he was just like, "That is the reason why back in classic Doctor Who they didn't show the Doctor eating because they didn't want to explain how he pooped." Well, American TV wasn't quite that bad. Characters ate all the time. They just held it in apparently because you could never show a bathroom or a toilet. Alfred Hitchcock. When he shows the toilet in Psycho, you know that is the first movie to actually show you a toilet. Is that true? It is the first time that you can clearly see a toilet. <laughs> I didn't know that. That's fucked up. Under the, under the, well, I don't know if it's the first movie to ever do that. There may have been some back before the standards were uh, developed. But, you know, the, the standards that they used to have for what was decent or not, that was the first time somebody got away under that system with, hey, here's a toilet people shit in this universe. <laughs> so in like the classic Universal Monster movies, nobody took a shit. Because, and here's the thing, the censors, by the time they made Psycho, the censors probably had already made up their mind that, that 
not sh- that showing a toilet wasn't really that big a deal. It's just that nobody had dared to do it yet. So they didn't really give him any resistance when he tried to do it. But the thing is, and to an audience who was seeing that for the first time in theaters, it actually added to the movie because they're seeing a toilet on screen, which is something that I've never seen before in a movie. And to them, their mind is conditioned not to see things like that on television. It almost makes it a little more disturbing. <laughs> To a, to a viewer in 1960, to see a television on film. I mean, to, all right. Well, Dylan, I'm a concerned parent. I don't want my kids fucking learning about lizards getting their dicks chopped off. I want you to run run this scene by me, and I'm going to tell you whether or not I deem it appropriate for my children, who like like giant monsters. They're Godzilla fans. They've gotten over the disappointment of this thing not being Godzilla. I've explained to them that it's not Godzilla. It's a different thing. All that shit's out of the way. Do, now we just got to do. We got to get. To the story. Do do lizards have dicks? Yes, they do. Are you sure? Yes, they do. They have hemi penises, just like snakes. They have what? Hemi penises, <laughs> meaning they got two dickheads. That's crazy as shit. It's fu- it's fucked up looking too. Um, did you know that dogs have like a knot that prevents the female from getting away while they deposit the sperm? Ugh. <laughs> Science. Anyway. My cat Simba, who is the first male cat we've had in years. We, we've always gotten girls. We finally got a got a guy, and I just whenever he lays on top of me and his ass is facing towards him, I'm like Simba, get that out of my face because his dick is in my face. Fucking, fucking put the tail in front of him. Well, he's got his tail up in the air. It's like Simba, get that out of my face. What the fuck is wrong with you? My cat's too fat. I've never seen his penis. <laughs> It's like that scene from Family Guy. Find your penis, one dollar, one dollar, find your penis. <laughs> did you did you get him neutered? Yeah, he's been neutered. Yes, so Simba. Um I'm worried that I'm I am worried that he might have the diabetes though. Um <laughs> Simba's only two, so we don't have to worry about that. Um Diabetes. Um what were we talking about? We're we're trying to run this bit. So my kids I'm trying to deem whether or not this is appropriate for you. You're the writer of the episode. You're telling me that this neutering thing is okay for kids. Uh, uh, Let's uh, run through the scene. Do your kids watch or have they ever walked in on the price is right in the morning? My kids don't watch morning television. They sleep in late. Would you be opposed to your children seeing an episode of The Price is Right? <laughs> um Are there gay people on that show? No, there are not. <laughs> I'm kidding. I mean, I, I mean, uh, unless, unless I'm sorry, I'm not homophobic. Sorry, I'm not homophobic. I was just making a little joke. I mean, you're clearly taking yourself too seriously. Uh, yeah, I would, I would let my kids watch The Price is Right. Are you aware that it's... do they do they neuter people on The Price is Right? <laughs> clearly, I don't understand The Price is Right. Are you aware that at the end of every episode, Bob Parks or not Bob Parks, but what's his name? Bob Parks. Bob Barker. Bob Parker. Bob Barker. No, Bob Barker, not Bob Parker. There's there's a real estate agent in my area named Bob Parks, and I'm always getting. <laughs> he's like this. He's like this really successful guy. Everybody knows his name around here. Anyway, and I, I really love him. Oh. I'm, I'm always getting them mixed up. Anyway, Bob Barker, because this is 19 <laughs> because this is 1998. Are you aware that at the end of every episode of The Price Is Right, Bob Barker says to the audience, "Have your pets spayed or neutered?" So you would rather you would rather your child see a game show in which the guy actually uses the word neutered, and then your well, child you, is this, going to what you say on, what would you say on Godzilla the series? And then your child would look up to you and say, "Mommy and or Daddy, what does neutered mean?" And you would say, <laughs> "But my kids aren't going to watch the fright. I know my kids are going to watch this Godzilla cartoon just like they watch the Pokemon." We were simply going to have a line. In which they mention that they have rendered Godzilla sterile. It's not Godzilla. It's, it's not Godzilla. This is 1998. No one's making that argument yet. It's sterile. I don't care. I, I grew up with the real Godzilla, the one with the laser beams coming out of his eyes. That is Godzilla. This is not Godzilla. Of course. How could I make such a mistake? <laughs> Truly, the laser beam goji. Is the standard <laughs> laser beam goji? Yes, <laughs> that's the greatest name ever. Is the standard of reality? <laughs> the standard of reality. Oh God! I don't know if this bit has anywhere to go. So, so wait, run, run the line by me. What's the line going to be? I'm not, I'm not sold yet. I don't want my kids fucking hearing about dicks getting cut off. One of the characters would say, "What if he reproduces?" And then Nick. Dapadopolis would say, 
It's Tostopoulos. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he would say that. No, he would. I'm I'm just I'm just fighting for the characters' rights. He would say to them, "Do not worry about him reproducing. Yea, that is impossible, for we have chopped off his dick." No, he wouldn't say that. <laughs> I don't like this. This ain't for. Now you know what? That's fine. That's cool. <laughs> My kids will like that. They like dicks. Um, it's a family picture. No, I'll... <laughs> I'm cool with that. What was I saying? No, he wouldn't say they chopped off his dick. He would simply state that the subject. The, Though the show would be way more interesting if that is what they said. <laughs> that the subject had been rendered <laughs> sterile, and therefore he would not produce children or fall in love with a giant Komodo dragon. But, but here's, I would almost prefer you say we chopped off his dick, because then my kids won't have to ask me questions about it. The problem with them saying, we have rendered him sterile, will they will go to me, mommy, daddy, how do you render somebody sterile? And I will have to explain to them... In my own words, that they, that means chopping off Godzilla's dick. That I am not okay with, sir. I deem this show unwatchable, and it cannot be seen by, by anybody. Have it's, you ever considered been... that maybe Godzilla does not have a penis? Well, seeing how he's got to be rendered sterile, he's got to have We a penis. are referring to an asexual organism. <laughs> so then how does, he, how does he fuck? He does not. He is an asexual organism. <laughs> I don't like this. I don't like this. This asexual shit. I'm already. I've already got to deal with the fucking the, the fucking gay people well, you know on the what? TVs. You know what? That's that's really something you should take up with Roland Emmerich. Um. <laughs> you just. I'm gonna bring him in, and you can. Find, no, no, no. I want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to this we're, this this shifty eyed foreigner. I want to talk to you. We're we are gonna we're gonna retcon this asexual shit by the end of the show. Anyway, we've got this whole Komodo dragon thing planned. But so, come on, what's a Komodo dragon? So what you can they fuck iguanas? Um, so what you really need to uh, you really need to take your complaint to Mister Holland. Um, I will go get him. No, I don't want to talk to this shifty eyed foreigner. Well, well, now, now you're just, now you're just being prejudiced. You know, you know what? Fine, I will. I, I, you know what? I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm not gonna let my kids watch this cartoon. I'm out of here. Bye. What? Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna let them watch the first season of Family Guy instead. That's gonna be for kids. It's for families. It's right there in the title. Fucking walk out. I'm just like, cunt. <laughs> I heard that. Good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the cartoon too. What are you going to do about it? Huh? Maybe we'll take this shit to Adult Swim. <laughs> Adult Swim hasn't been invented yet, you fucking asshole! Maybe we'll wait until it is and then take it there. Huh? How do you like that? <laughs> By then my kids will be growing up and they'll know what that means. I won't have to explain it to them. That's fine. You can do that. Fine, I will. Good. We haven't, we're agreed that. Alright. Good. You have a good day then. You too. You have a pleasant, have... You have a pleasant experience. <laughs> <laughs> a pleasant experience. Live long and prosper. Oh God! Good journey. Enjoy your work, your workday experience. Did I really just say good journey? Good journey. That's a fucking He-Man reference. Good morrow. Good morrow. No, good journey is a fucking He-Man reference, and it isn't even a reference to the show. It's a reference to the shitty ass movie. <laughs> A movie where I did not kill He-Man. But at least it's got Frank Langella in it. <laughs> Trying to kill He-Man. Playing pretty much Emperor Palpatine, but with his face melted off. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much what he is in that movie. Oh, God, okay. M- my my gut is officially bust. Um, I think we're going to wrap up, Dylan. Um, I, I don't think there's any more to be said. I think we've said it all. Y- Yugi Man... Pokio. Pokio. Digiblade. What do you think the episode title for this one's going to be? I'm not. I have no idea. Um, I'm thinking of calling it. Uh, see, now I'm tempted to call it like I think I thought I was going to call it Yugi Man versus Pokio. Nice. But I was. I don't know. We'll. we'll, we'll I'll see what happens when I re-listen to it. That's when I decide the episode titles is when I re-listen to it at when I'm editing because then I then I pick out which bits actually funny. Oh, um, no. What you got to call it is DFOS episode twenty what eight? Twenty eight. Yeah. Episode twenty eight. Goku Sun is definitely the best Pokemon in Yu Gi Oh. <laughs> Demons from Outer Space episode twenty eight. Neutering. It's about your dicks getting chopped off. Diabetes part two.
<laughs> well, that wasn't the title of SOS. That was called Live Free or Diabetes. Well, then this one would be called A Good Day to Diabetes. <laughs> yes. All right. Um, it's the far inferior sequel, where <laughs> Wolford Brimley goes to Russia and meets his son, Baby Wolford Brimley. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Heineman from Mythbusters. Oh, all right. He'll introduce I think that's him all like... to his grandpappy Maguma, and they will all have a nice <laughs> family reunion. And his cousin John Lennon. Um, oh, what? Yeah, oh, ha ha ha! Very clever, good sir. Thanks, thanks, Beth. All right, um, that's gonna. I think that's gonna do it. Uh, as always, be sure to like the Sons of Sarazawa Network homepage on Facebook for more updates on all things SOS. We just reached. Uh, we just uh, exceeded a hundred likes. So. Uh, Thank you to all you kids for doing that. Right, right. Always be on the lookout for new episodes of DFOS, SOS, and Shoe Watch if you wanna. Um, feel like if you're in, the, if you're feeling like a really kind of like you're, if you're feeling down on yourself and you need to indulge in feeling down on yourself and just listen to something that's just really gonna just put you in a bad mood. If you, if you need to make yourself really sad before you can, <sighs> before you can use your Godzilla flashlight. Then, then watch. Shoe watch is the show for you. Um, watch shoe watch. Um, yeah. Watch shoe watch. That is the greatest sentence I've ever heard. You should go shoe watch it. Um. Oh. <laughs> um. Uh, 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 oh my. Um, I'm pretty sure I've made that joke before, just not on recording. I think Andres has made that joke too. I think Andres got it for me. That Mexican bastard. He took my gerb. Um. That shitty foreigner. Um. <laughs> took my gerb. Um. Taking her quotes. Um. Take my quote. Um, um, <laughs> what was I, uh, I had more. Godzilla Odyssey is in the is in the works. We're working on the first issue, the s- and the second issue, and the third issue, and all the ensuing issues. Uh, we have some concept art actually that uh uh that's 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 done. We're not going to post it because it's spoilery. Um, it is very spoilery. Holy shit! We're not going to post it. We may as the episodes come as, as the episodes as the issues come out though. We'll uh we'll see. When we reveal a certain thing, that certain thing may pop up on Super DM sixty four at DeviantArt. And you can see it there. Perhaps. Um, um so Dylan, let's talk vaguely about this because I don't want to spoil it, but you've done let's 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 run through the art. You've done a version of Godzilla. A um, version, yes. You've done the villain. Yes, we have a clear design for the main villain of our series. That is established. That is done. We have alternate universe versions of that design that, we, that, we, that we're not going to use. Um, that we are not going to use, especially one of them. Especially one of them that's based on a, a very particular chapter in Godzilla history. Um, a very particular neutered chapter. Um, very, uh, new, oh, you spoiled it. Neutered chapter. Um, uh, what was that? It or had we had you done more? We're working on another concept. Oh, are we? Yeah. Are we really? I didn't know about that. <laughs> I feel so out of the loop. Because the, you don't remember? Because I showed you and you were like, that's good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember now. I, I, oh, I thought we said that one already. It's the alternate version of Godzilla. Oh, we did. Well, we haven't. You said I've done an alternate version of Godzilla. We're working on an alternate version of Godzilla. Right, we're working on the... the we're getting closer to the final version. Um but, but but that's not really important. The the important part is is the actual writing. Yeah, that's because the pictures are just kind of extra to go along with the story. Um, the series has a logo. Oh, we've we've, we've had a logo um, for a while. Mm-hmm. We just haven't showed it. Yeah, um, at some point, we're probably going to make like a Facebook page or something for this thing. Yeah, well, once the series is kind of uh, begun, we'll we'll make a Facebook page to to get people excited for it. The um, logo will be there. Um, we'll, we'll start posting links to all the episodes on, on the internet, all over the place, in the fuck. Yeah, there are, um, there are whispers around he- us here at the SOS of, of, a pot- of potentially, uh, cause it's not just Dylan and I, a couple of other SOS members are working on it, we've got some outside help potentially coming in. Yes, with a couple key episodes. Yeah, so, um... When I say key, I mean one-off, no. Um... <laughs> when I say key, I mean... Um, I say key, I mean not at all important, but that's not what key means. Shut up. Sh- shut up, Dylan. Um, uh, yeah, Dylan, shut your fucking mouth. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Don't complicate this with logic. Hey, Bill, you know what? You better shut the fuck up, too. Um, yeah, well, for Billy. Um, the candles. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, your anger, it, it feeds me. Um, 
<laughs> Whoa. What were we talking about? All right, Emperor Palpatine, I'll, I'll stop. Um, you wish your anger. <laughs> Take your father's place at my side. Your father's never met me. <laughs> I've never met my father. Oh. Regardless, Take, I want you to be by my side. Take that kid who used to be by my side's place by my side. <laughs> and wear these assless chaps. What are you, Batman now? Yes. And I'm afraid the battle station will be quite operational when Andres arrives. Oh, all right. Um, I just got, I was like, oh, what? Oh, yeah, okay. Um, um, uh, uh, Toho Nation, you can join it. You can join it, if you want to. You can be there and love it and like it and enjoy it. Um, um, you can... Uh, subscribe to Dylan's YouTube channel for episodes of Kaiju Spotlight. More coming soon. Look forward to the Bill and Dylan's Road Trip to G-Fest, also featuring Andres Perez, which, <laughs> which will be happening next month, and we will... Less than a month away, less than a month away. And we will produce some sort of content. A lot. There's going to be a lot of stuff going up regarding that. Bill's got um, plans. Here's kind of the plan. Um... You and I have, and Andres have already discussed doing several videos before we leave. Um, I imagine we'll do. Here's what I think we should do, and we should probably discuss this off recording, but we'll let them uh, let them in on it too. Um, we should probably have like a short video that's just like launching our road trip to G Fit. Well, I think we should do a pre a pre road trip DFOS with Andres. Um, we do a road SOS. You know what we should do in that pre <laughs> road trip TFOS featuring Andres? What? We should get our hands to the sequel to Lost Skeleton of Cadaver. <gasps> Ooh, that's a good idea. Well, we, we should definitely do a commentary, but uh, we should either do Lost Skeleton or maybe something else, like Dragon Ball Evolution, I was thinking. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know Andres is somewhat of a DBZ fan, probably not as big as us, but you know. Yeah, that kid that kid can hold his own. He watches abridged at least. Um Yeah, you know, you know, he can make popo jokes. We all like to make popo jokes. We all we all like like ourselves a good popo joke. Um, I don't know when he's gonna get any popo jokes in, seeing as how Mr. Popo is not in Dragon Ball Evolution and it's far unfortunately, as unfortunately that imagine if they would have tried to bring that fuck to screen. <laughs> he is not in Dragon Ball Evolution, and as far as I can imagine, neither are the police. So I'm not sure why there would have to be a police. Oh, <laughs> oh Dylan. Um, also, there, also, you can't make any pig jokes because there's no Oolong or the police. Um, or uh, the cat. What's the cat's name? Corin. Corin. No, well, Corin, but what's... Uh, Who, it's pretty much been uh, uh, established as a life partner with Yajirobe. Yeah. You, oh, yeah, dude. It's 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 not even. It's not. Even, they're they're just they're gay. It's just de it's just done. Well, you don't understand. It's not even subtext anymore. Yajirobe straight up admits it in the new movie. <laughs> it's a cooler movie. I can't wait to see it. Um. No, what's the other cat's name? Um, oh, Poir. 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 Yeah, that's it. Okay. He can shape shift, but they never. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like Oolong, he can shape shift. Um. Always hangs out with Yadger, not Yadger Ruby. Yamcha. No, Yamcha. Yamcha. They're life partners too. <laughs> they're life. They're, they're, yeah, exactly. Um, the most disturbing set of life partners is probably uh, Tian and Chao Tzu. They're they're a little creepy. Um, they, there's some questions I have about their their relationship. Um, Chao Tzu. Um, Normally, the advantages of dating a midget would be obvious, but he's too short even to be eye level with your dick. Um, and also, way too effeminate, and also, uh. Childlike. Um, Jesse was so short. He looks like a fucking Pokemon. He he does look like a Pokemon. He should just go around all the time going Chao Tzu. <gasps> look, Vegeta, a Chao Tzu. What if? Oh, I didn't catch it, Vegeta. You have to damage it first. What if Tien and Chao Tzu were going into battle, and Tien just to fuck with him was like Chao Tzu? I choose you. <laughs> I'd be down. Um, fuck you, Tien. No. <laughs> Chao There is no call for that kind of language. That's not what you said last night, oh yes it is. Oh, um, <laughs> so we'll do, I, I imagine, I, I think we should do a road SOS. 
on the road? Uh, only because we're going to have more than just you, me, and Andres in the car. Since there'll be two other folks in the car. So that would be an SOS roster. So I imagine we should record that as an SOS episode. It's going to be an episode of SOS with women? Oh! What? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun! Um, the show may never be the same again. We'll have to change the title, and it'll just fall apart. Um, it'll be like that Joey spinoff of Friends. I'll have um, to throw all the tampon jokes right out the window. Yeah, we'll have to get all the sexist jokes out, out right off the bat. Just get those out of the way. Um, uh, and then we'll do... I think we'll do a... Uh, I think what we should do instead of doing like a like podcast every day at G Fest, do like G Fest like day videos, like G Fest day whatever with us. Um, yeah, this is what happens. We do them all day, and then I'll sit da- or we all will all sit down that night and just assemble it into a. Uh, or maybe instead of doing, or we could do two things. We could do. It would be so. Great. And now, now we really shouldn't be saying this on recording. Here's what we do. On the road trip, since it's a 14-hour drive, we do we record as much audio as we can and release that as a podcast, but also edit it into a shorter like video, like the best of. The best of the road trip. But also with visuals, so like we have some visual gags in there and all that stuff. Um, and then the day stuff, I think we should just do as videos and not do podcasts because that just be way. And then we do. I think what we should do then is, is then when we get home, do one podcast about the as like a retrospective, the experience overall. Imagine, imagine if SOS in years to come becomes to G Fest what G Four used to be to, to Comic Con. Oh, oh shit! Yes, um, that be we should make an event out of it, dude. Absolutely. We are here um, at the Pickwick Theater, and the security guards are now coming to take away our camera. Run! <laughs> Oh, we'll also have a uh, a Dawn of the Planet of the Apes review uh, mm. up during G Fest because we're gonna fucking see it. We're gonna see it, motherfuckers! In Chicago, this is gonna be like the most memorable movie theater experience of my life because it's gonna be I know. a fucking other city with like two of my best buds. Man, it's gonna be awesome. Fuck that, man! Chicago. <laughs> Fuck fucking with friends. <laughs> Chicago, man. <laughs> um. They got deep dish pizza there. Um, do have deep deep dish pizza there. <laughs> oh, I'm a New Yorker, man. That's gonna be rough. Having deep dish pizza. Me and Chicago are not gonna get along with the whole pizza situation. No. What? You're gonna eat the fuck out of that pizza. I'm probably gonna yeah. I'm probably gonna eat the fuck out of that pizza. You don't really give a fuck. I really don't care. Um, How many New Yorkers? who are all oh the Chicago pizza. Fuck that. How many of them will turn down a hot? Why don't we sound Canadian? <laughs> oh, that Chicago pizza, it's not really my thing. Eh? How many of them do you think would actually turn down uh, a freshly made, staring them in the face, Chicago deep dish pizza? No, I wouldn't have it. I, I like I like my normal thin crust. Or not my thin crust, but my normal fucking basic, regular pizza. Not that deep dish bullshit. But you can fold it. Uh, nah. You can fold regular pizza, too. It's not much fun. It's... <laughs> It's more fun. I never fold pizza. I never understand. I I never... Oh, oh, you're not a, you're absolutely not a New Yorker then. All New Yorkers fold their pizza. I know I'm not a New Yorker, Bill. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> for but I mean, you're not like you don't even like work culture. Like when you when you get up to if if, if we have pizza when you and Andres come up here, it, you you guys are just gonna make fools out of yourselves. You're just gonna look like idiots trying to eat your pizza. You guys are going to pull out, like, a fork and knife, and it's just going to be embarrassing for everybody involved. I won't have time to to make an ass of myself, because I eat like a fucking rabid wolf. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's an interesting comparison. But, well, you know, we'll talk hey, about all this hey, that, stuff. That food isn't in my mouth yet. Fuck that! Um. <laughs> all right, what a... <laughs> All right, we can discuss all this G-Fest stuff as it comes up and off recording where we we, we, we can plan without the listeners being bored by it. Indeed. Um, Indeed. So uh, anyway, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode of the Demons from Outer Space. Until next time, I'm Bill Worcester. And I'm SuperDM64. Make sure to watch out for all that stuff we just advertised. And of course, order your copy of the Godzilla Fleshlight. Now being sold with a free... And be sure to have all of your Komodo dragons and iguanas spaded and neutered so that way they can't 
reproduce together, even though they can't anyway. Just, just make sure it's just a mess. Just don't, just don't even, don't even worry with it. The Godzilla flashlight now being sold with a free Mecha Godzilla vibrator and a free bottle of George Takei's famous banana oil lubricant. <laughs> Call in the next five minutes, and we will double that offer. <laughs> Give you two bottles of lube with a Mecha King Ghidorah addition to the Mecha Godzilla vibrator. No, 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 a Garuda enhancement. We'll throw in this King Ghidorah three-headed dildo. <laughs> Oh, and a, and a and a Magara fucking dildo to go along with it. Give her the shocker and have an extra head <laughs> for no apparent reason. <laughs> and the Shakiris, the Shakiris anal egg. Um, Billy Mays, this is the most graphic commercial you've ever done. <laughs> but I'm having lots of fun. I'm dead now. I'm allowed to be graphic. Anyway, as always. Them Germans, Davy fucked up, and so is Billy Mace. But not as fucked up as this show. Never.